Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. You can't handle the Ruth. Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg would die on a September 18th at the age of 87. 87 summing out to Ruth Bader Ginsburg, matching the value of Masonic sacrifice. And in the Hebrew cipher, sums out to Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah. And the Jewish high holidays began at sundown last night. Rosh Hashanah is the first of the holidays and marks the Jewish New Year. Traditionally, many Jews pray and celebrate during services at their synagogue, but the pandemic is limiting indoor gatherings, of course, so many services are now online. Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, begins next Sunday, and that one is the holiest of all Jewish holidays. And of course, um, Ruth Bader Ginsburg was Jewish, Lisa. That was a big part of the historic nature. First Jewish woman to serve on the Supreme Court. And it was notable that she did pass on Rosh Hashanah the start of the new year. When Justice Ginsburg pass has religious significance as well with members of the Jewish community telling us that it's amazing that she passed on the eve of Rosh Hashanah. She was a legacy and traditionally Judaism says that people who die on the eve of the Jewish new year are considered the most righteous of people. Ginsburg dedicated her legal career to challenging laws that discriminated on the basis of sex and gender. The Jewish community will mark her passing forever. I mean, now this is now part of, of Jewish history that will always be remembered. Traditionally, when someone of Jewish faith passes, mourners say, may their memory be a blessing. We continue now with the death of Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Ginsburg was 87 and had been battling pancreatic cancer. On September 18th, 2020, Judge Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who sums to 227 in the Hebrew cipher, would die exactly 227 years from the George Washington, the first U.S. President's Capitol cornerstone ritual. And on this day in 1793, George Washington laid the cornerstone of the United States Capitol building. It took nearly a century to complete Project managers came and went, the British set it on fire, and it was used as a barracks during the Civil War. The location of the cornerstone is unknown today, but the House of Democracy stands strong. The cornerstone ritual, which sums out to 227, went a little bit something like this. It has been the custom since time immemorial to dedicate the cornerstone with corn, wine, and oil. We present them now in the name of the great architect of the universe to invoke his continued blessing, which he has bestowed upon our country and its people. Most worshipful, we pour this corn as an emblem of nourishment. May it serve as a symbol of nourishment for all of humanity. Most worshipful, we pour this wine as an emblem of refreshment. May the giver of every blessing prosper all our laudable undertakings. Most worshipful, we pour this oil as an emblem of joy. May peace, love, happiness transcend this our great land. The ceremony of laying a cornerstone has been passed down to us from time immemorial. It is symbolic of that spiritual building which each one of us is engaged in erecting during the course of our natural lives. May the great ruler of the universe continue to bless and consecrate this structure which has risen from the foundation stone and may he continue to bless us as we erect our spiritual building, the chief foundation stone of which may always be well formed, true and trusty. Interestingly, 
22 divided by 7 is the formula we use to find pi, the math integer whose first 144 digits sum out to 666. It is used to calculate the circumference of a circle. Just watch what happens when you write out 22 divided by 7 in English ordinal. 227 also sums out to the Continental Congress. Let freedom ring and match the value of time is an illusion and the circumference of a circle. Circle. Uh, circle. We never had time. Time doesn't exist to anyone but itself. Time is a flat circle. We've been here before. We'll be here again. Kim Jong Un is coming. Time is a flat circle. I don't. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Boy, what a year it's been. I guarantee you've already forgotten some of the biggest moments of 2019, because these days. Time is a flat circle, right? So later in the show, we'll look at how what the White House did this year will affect what they want next. You ever heard something called the in-brain theory, detectives? No, that's it's over my head. It's like in this universe, we process time linearly forward. But outside of our space-time, from what would be a fourth dimensional perspective, time wouldn't exist. And from that vantage, could we attain it? We see <clears throat> our space time would look flattened like a single sculpture with matter and superposition of every place it ever occupied. Or sentience just cycling through our lives like carts on a track. See, everything outside our dimension, that's eternity. Eternity looking down on us. Now, to us, it's a sphere. But to them, it's a circle. 227 also sums out to nothing has ever been real. Knights of the Templar, the Freemasonic Order, the Riddle of Revelation, Pope Francis, Shaquille O'Neal, extraterrestrials, President Carter, the Trump vaccine. vaccine, vaccine. How many vaccines are going to be rolled out? I understand there are three. Well, so we have three, and guess who's rolling out the vaccine? The United States military. I mean, what do you think they're good at? Deployment. Doctor, what about those governors like Cuomo, who say, you know, if it's a Trump vaccine, I don't want it. Or a Kamala Harris, who said, I won't take it if Donald Trump, this is a Trump vaccine. They ought to call it the Trump vaccine. Oh yeah? If the vaccine's so great, why are people who got it getting sick? Because it's not perfect. They told us all along it wasn't perfect. They told us all along that the variant was going to be a problem. The reason you still get vaccinated, the reason I got vaccinated, even though I heard all of these stories about how lousy I might feel because of someone who had COVID, and I did, was to protect myself from the severity, how bad it can be. The vaccine blunts the severity even of the variant. Look, masks help stop the spread, okay? We know that. But only the vaccine, only the Trump vaccine, and the Trump vaccine alone can keep you from getting very sick. Strangely enough, on June 25th, 2021, one day after the Surfside condominium collapse, 180 weeks after the calm before the storm president and Stormy Daniel scandal would first break on the day that a 180-day deadline set by former U.S. President Donald Trump on December 27 of 2020 for the United States government to release their much-awaited UAP report. UAP report. UAP. They're already here, party people. The aliens arrived a while ago, and now the government is softening our collective beach so we're not shocked and emulsified when we do the wrong thing at the welcoming ceremony. The fact no one is truly freaking out about the forthcoming intelligence report on unidentified aerial phenomena, or UAPs, 
Not to be confused with WAPs, which apparently stands for waffles and pancakes, according to my daughter. It shows you three things. Number one, most people believe aliens exist and have the technology to make contact. Number two, our government knows way more than they're saying, and it's pretty big. Number three, we have been subjected to so much insanity, nothing shocks us. So just slap aliens atop the PTSD pile. I know a lot of people, including physicists and intelligency types, are hesitant for us to make contact, and that's fair. But if various LGMs are shimmying through wormholes, traversing billions of light years to peep us, it means their tech is very legit. If you're flying a Tic Tac, breaking the sound barrier with no sonic boom, stopping on a dime, hitting the gas, and then doing Mach 35, and then disappearing, your Martian guns also equally beefy and deadly. If they wanted to have a massive human weenie roast, they'd have done it by now. We'd have been skewered. Maybe they're curious. Maybe there is some version of universal intelligence and goodness and curiosity are the default settings, not murder and destruction. It is possible if there is this universal goodness and evolution occurs throughout the heavens, maybe they can teach us to stop being a bunch of a-holes. Speaking of which, if they can violate the known laws of physics with this incredibly advanced technology, why are they sticking with the anal probe? Is it just some sort of a weird cosmic fetish? Do aliens have... Jimmy Carter admitted he'd seen a UFO before he was president and promised to tell us all what he learned on day one of his tepid term. He didn't. They never do. They just allude to something. It is a miracle President Trump didn't spill the beans because he can't keep anything secret. He went on Don Jr.'s podcast and basically said, I know something. And it's really good, but I think he promised I wouldn't spill the E.T. Get it? So now we have to sit and wait politely until June, and whatever is in that report we've been so titillated with... It's uniting Marco Rubio, Shaq, and former President Obama. They're all freaked out about our pending close encounter. The truth is out there. On June 25th, 2021, the news report. Our main story this hour, former U.S. police officer Derek Chauvin has been sentenced to 22 and a half years in jail for the murder of George Floyd. That's 10 years more than the statutory guidelines. Chauvin had been convicted of second and third degree murder and manslaughter. And our other top story this hour, the United States will keep about 650 of its troops in Afghanistan after the rest of its forces are withdrawn. In response, the Taliban exclusively told Al Jazeera if U.S. troops do remain in place, it would be a breach. Of, pre of agreements and that it would have the right to respond to that. Well, we're continuing to follow developments in Miami. We are back with a Fox News alert. Authorities just gave an update on the tragic condo building collapse in Surfside, Florida. Officials now say four people confirmed dead and 159 remain missing. We will continue search and rescue because we still have hope that we will find people alive. On June 25th, 2021, one day after the Surfside condominium collapse, the news would report 159 people missing, 159. Coincidentally, the time span between Donald Trump and the 72-year-old John Podesta's birthdays. Several U.S. presidents are on record talking about the UFO mystery. Yep. Presidents Jimmy Carter, Ronald Reagan, both had UFO sightings of their own, but the current presidential campaign might be the first in which UFO disclosure has been championed by a major party candidate. During a recent campaign stop in Las Vegas, the campaign manager for Hillary Clinton told Politics Now host Steve Sebelius that his candidate will try to get to the bottom of the UFO question. John Podesta has always been a strong advocate for declassification of government files in general and UFO files in particular. As White House Chief of Staff for Bill Clinton, Podesta helped declassify hundreds of millions of documents. But if there were UFO secrets being held somewhere, they eluded even the president. Podesta returned to the White House as an advisor to President Obama. And on the day he left that job, he sent out a tweet saying his biggest disappointment was the failure to uncover the UFO files. These days, Podesta has the ear of another potential president. He's running the campaign for Hillary Clinton and made it clear to political reporter Steve Sebelius that the UFO question has been discussed. I've talked to Hillary about that. It's just a little bit of a, of a cause of mine, which is that people really want to know 
what the government knows, right. and there are uh, still classified files that could be declassified. It wasn't an offhand uh, remark. Podesta has answer. encouraged and journalists I to ask his answer. candidate about UFOs, and a few have Let done so. Proud. Mrs. Clinton told a New Hampshire newspaper she intends to get to the bottom of the UFO mystery, thinks it's possible the planet may have been visited, and would consider creating a task force to investigate Nevada's Area 51 military base, which became a center of UFO UFO attention more than 25 years ago because of reports that aired on KLAS TV. CNN characterized Mrs. Clinton's remarks as jokes, but Podesta makes it clear he and his candidate are serious. I think I've convinced her uh, that we need an effort to kind of go look at that and declassify as much as we can uh, so that people have uh, uh, their, their legitimate questions answered uh, and um, more attention. Uh, and more discussion uh, about uh, unexplained aerial phenomena can happen without uh, people who are in public life, who are serious about this, being ridiculed. The Clintons know firsthand how the UFO topic invites ridicule. Anyone remember the frequent tabloid headlines during the Clinton presidency? Hillary adopts alien baby, space alien endorses Bill, and more recently conspiracy theorists have suggested there are UFO secrets hidden in Mrs. Clinton's private emails. It comes with the territory. I come in for I guess my fair share of uh, people people uh, you know raising questions about whether I'm off my rocker but I, I've been long time advocate of uh, uh, of declassification of, of uh, records. And he basically ended one of his speeches by saying, not only can the public handle it, but we should do it because it's the law. Huffington Post writer Lee Spiegel has followed the UFO debate since the late 70s. He notes that Podesta has been way out in front on UFO disclosure. Uh, I think it's time to open the books. In speeches at places like the National Press Club. In the mid-90s, the Clintons were lobbied by billionaire Lawrence Rockefeller to end UFO secrecy. Mrs. Clinton was photographed with Rockefeller while holding a book titled Are We Alone? The Implications of Discovery of E.T. Life. Bill Clinton has made Made public statements confirming that he tried to get to the bottom of UFO issues while in office. So first I had people go look at the records on Area 51 to make sure there was no alien down there. <laughs> The government's interest in UFOs officially ended with the closure of Project Blue Book in 1969, but the suspicion remains that unexplained encounters involving national security are still being studied by someone. Podesta suspects that someone is holding on to a large cache of UFO files. Lee Spiegel says several whistleblowers have surfaced over the years, including the late lunar astronaut Dr. Edgar Mitchell, who say that secrets are still being kept. There are military people coming forward now saying the government never did stop investigating UFOs, and we need to grow up to that. We can see what's going on here in the Mrs. Clinton's rival for the Democratic nomination, Senator Bernie Sanders, was also asked about UFOs, but said he is far more interested in issues that are more pressing for most Americans. One really good reason to vote for him, and it has to do with LGMs. Little Green Man, this week on the Joe Rogan Experience podcast, Bernie said that if elected, he's going to get info on aliens and he's going to tell all of us. He went on to say that his wife would demand that the 1% get all the best flying sauces. <laughs> Bernie said currently he doesn't have any knowledge on UFOs, but several past presidents claimed to have seen one, including Jimmy Carter and Ronald Reagan. They both said they saw UFOs. The nation has alien fever right now, and with the storm area 51 thing, and Bernie might have our cowbell. 159 also sums out too. Chaos, candidate. Donald, you know, is great at, at the uh, one-liners, but he's a chaos candidate, and he'd be a chaos president. He would not be the commander in chief we need to keep our country safe. 159 also sums out to 45th President Donald Trump, 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 Master Mason, 147, Sir Elton John, and direct energy matches the value of Diego Maradona, Maradona, Maradona. and General 
Flynn. Hello, welcome. You're watching BBC News. I'm in headlines. President Trump has granted a full pardon to his former national security adviser, Michael Flynn. General Flynn served three weeks in office at the start of the Trump administration before pleading guilty to lying to the FBI. On the eve of Thanksgiving, the U.S. has recorded more than one million cases of coronavirus in two consecutive weeks. The disease has now killed 260,000 Americans. One of the greatest footballers ever, Diego Maradona, has died at the age of 60 after reportedly suffering a heart attack. The Argentine superstar had struggled with substance abuse and ill health, but said that playing football always gave him great joy. The Argentine soccer player, considered the best in the world, would die of a heart attack on the 720th month, 27th day of his life. Two months, seven days after the death of Joan Ruth Bader Ginsburg, 27. Summing out to six. Six, six, six. Argentina. Hispanic. Catholic. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Argentina, being the homeland of the first Jesuit and South American Pope, the Argentinian superstar would die 23 days before Pope Francis's 84th birthday. 23. Summing out to soccer. Yahweh. And 66. Which sums out to Jorge Mario Bergoglio. Judge Amy Coney Barrett, the FDA's approval, mandatory vaccination, Argentinian superstar, star, star. and Donald John Trump, the former world class midfielder, dying exactly 201 days before Donald Trump's 75th birthday, birthday, birthday. 159 days before the Surfside condominium collapse, exactly 23 weeks before the government's UAP report release, President Donald Trump's Justice Department, which would resume federal executions in 2020. 2020. The Trump administration has allowed the execution of death row inmate Brandon Bernard. It was the first federal execution during a presidential transition in 130 years and the ninth since President Trump restarted federal executions after a 17-year hiatus. His administration plans to rush through another four before his term ends next month. The Trump administration, which will resume executions after a 17-year hiatus, 17, summing out to the 17th letter of the English alphabet, Q, 17, is also coincidentally the amount of days between Pfizer's vaccine announcement on November 9th, 2020, or Chaos Never Dies Day, a day written out, 119, which sums out to Q's vaccine, dead man walking, and we are Q, and the day that would see the death of Diego Maradona. Meanwhile, Brandon Bernard would be executed for a crime he committed exactly 1,122 weeks before his death, 27 days after his execution, or 159 days before the Surfside condominium collapse, exactly 23 weeks before the government's UAP report release, 149 days before Donald Trump's 75th birthday, President Donald Trump's Justice Department would execute Dustin J. Higgs. 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 National headlines this morning. The number of federal death sentences carried out under the Trump administration in the past year is more than the previous 56 years combined. The Trump administration has carried out its 13th and final federal execution. It happened yesterday. A jury convicted Dustin Higgs of killing three women at a Maryland wildlife refuge back in 1996. He was the third person to receive a lethal injection this week at the federal prison in Indiana. The 48-year-old Higgs was said to be calm but defiant in his final moments, calling himself an innocent man. And just in case you're wondering, the Trump administration would resume executions after a 17-year hiatus on July 14th, 2020. A day written out. One, four, seven, seven, seven. 159 also sums out to Agenda 21. One. As in the year 2021, or Event 201. An event that would take place on a date that sums out to 6, 66, 6, 6, 147 days before March 13th, 2020. March 13th, Trump wrote, on behalf of the American people, I am honored to congratulate you upon the seventh anniversary of your election to the chair of St. Peter. The magic seven. I am officially declaring a national emergency. 
October 18th, 2019, the day that the Johns Hopkins Center for Health Security in partnership with the World Economic Forum, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation in New York would host event 201. A global pandemic exercise. Governments need to be willing to do things that are out of their historical perspective or for the most part, it's, it's really a, a war footing that we need to be on. We shouldn't underestimate the um, power of entrepreneurship. We need to escalate that, whether it's through you know, the governments um, helping with tax breaks or you know, subsidies of that nature to, to, to increase manufacturing of those types of products. It can happen quickly. A Marshall-type plan, uh, you know, I don't mean to say that exactly, but a Marshall plan that can go into effect uh, can stimulate a change very quickly. Coincidentally, Event 201 would be held on the exact same day that the 7th annual World Military Games would be held in Wuhan, Wuhan, China, 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 China. And while the United States would declare a state of emergency 147 days after the 2019 World Military Games, the same day that the John Hopkins and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation would hold a global pandemic exercise on a date that sums out to 666. The World Health Organization would declare COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. On March 11th, 2020, 600 and 66 days as the John Hopkins Center for Health Security, along with Washington, D.C., would host the Clay to X pandemic exercise on May 15th, 2018, a date that sums out to 147. The creation and intentional release of the Clay to X virus. The impact of not doing something has lots of consequences. We can't retreat from the rest of the world. The continuity of government here cannot be overestimated. A federal quarantine of this scale is uh, unprecedented. The question everywhere, when will there be a vaccine? We have got to engage the private sector. They know that we don't have a vaccine yet. They want vaccines to be prioritized. I would not want to pull those people back. And we need on the ground to be able to uh, assure protection of our first responders. This is a non-starter. I'm going to need these people. I got this feeling in a whole lot of other places. More than 40 countries are reporting outbreaks and many more are suspected of having cases. Leadership requires doing things that are oftentimes unpopular. This issue has the amazing capacity to be number 11 on anybody's list of 10 more most important items. We have been unbelievably weakened by this crisis. What the world will look like when it's done is still very uncertain. Including the day, 666 days after the John Hopkins Center for Health Security would hold event 201. On Friday the 13th of August, 2021, 74 weeks or 17 months. Two very big words. After Friday the 13th of 2020, the CDC would announce. As early as tonight, a third shot could start going into the arms of some of the 7 million Americans who are immunocompromised. The CDC director giving the sign off late today. Nationwide, less than 3% of all Americans qualify. But for those with weakened immune systems, like certain cancer patients, organ transplant recipients, and those with severe immune deficiencies, a third dose could be a lifesaver. This action is about ensuring our most vulnerable who may need an additional dose to enhance their biological responses. Because the immunocompromised may not get the same level of protection from two doses of Pfizer or Moderna, they would be eligible for a third dose of either vaccine, though it's recommended they stay with the same manufacturer. There was no decision for those given Johnson & Johnson because there's not enough data surprising development from San Francisco General Hospital. By the end of the week, people who got the single-dose Johnson & Johnson vaccine will be able to get a second shot of either Pfizer or Moderna at San Francisco General Hospital. Booster is not the word health officials are using. Instead, San Francisco's Department of Public Health is calling it 
a supplemental dose. It's not a booster because it's not specific for some of the variants, which the booster ultimately will be. Dr. Chris Colwell is the chief of emergency medicine at Zuckerberg San Francisco General. On Monday, he voted to allow the hospital's vaccine clinic to give a supplemental mRNA vaccine to somebody who had the J&J shot. Potential benefit, no downside. To me, as we look at the future of, of what this virus and we're sitting now we're facing a fourth surge, it does make sense. 665,000 San Franciscans have been vaccinated, but only about 8% of them have received the Johnson & Johnson shot. And people are worried about breakthrough infections. You know, people were having concerns about whether that single dose was going to be enough. That concern is why Dr. Lisa Winston says some people have gone out to get extra vaccine doses on their own. As San Francisco General's chief of staff and hospital epidemiologist, she supports the supplemental dose, but wants to be clear, there's not enough data yet to support any possible benefit. There's not a specific recommendation to give it. Um, it's not part of an emergency use authorization. But you think it's safe? Yeah, we do think it's safe. There was no decision for those given Johnson & Johnson because there's not enough data. The CDC pointing to studies that show 40% of hospitalized breakthrough cases involve those with weak immune systems. But the agency is not calling the third dose a booster. It's very clear the CDC is labeling this a third dose as appropriate because the first two doses were not adequate enough to get the full potential of immunity. the night sky, uncontaminated by the light of any nearby cities, you can see things. And of course, you've got a rich tradition of actual, real-life, spooky science fiction stuff. The Manhattan Project in Los Alamos, nuclear missile silos hidden deep beneath the desert floor, it's out there. So, where are we? Ground zero of where everything seems to have started. Submitted for your approval. Norio and his friend James, two men associated with the New Mexico UFO and Paranormal Forum. This is where uh, America's rocketry actually started. At the end of World War II, classified units of the CIA and Army intelligence were busy sandbagging and sneaking away from probable prosecution cadres of the world's best rocket scientists. Did I mention they were Nazis? Oh yeah, many of them were sent around here. Other very mysterious things even took place allegedly in 1947. 1947, Roswell incident. That's right, that's uh, still a mystery. Some say, you notice how they always say that in those dubious, cheaply reenacted doc shows? Some say it was the remains of an alien spacecraft. Anywho, back then, they were working on some pretty cool stuff. For instance, a Mylar-like weather balloon designed to carry high-resolution cameras across the Soviet Union. When they got way up in the atmosphere, they'd pancake out like a flying saucer. Might that explain the excessive zeal and mysterious behaviors? I mean, if one of these things crashed in the desert, you can well understand that a whole bunch of sinister-looking bodies would show up and start telling people never speak of this incident. And You know, it's hard to say, but uh, any military could create a cover story for anything. Any possibility of like cyborgs or aliens? Yeah. Good question. I, you know, I've heard that there is and then I've heard there isn't. Ruth Bader Ginsburg would die at the age of 87, which sums out to her name and matches the value of the National Security Act. And on this day in 1947, then President Harry Truman signed the National Security Act. The Cold War was in full swing, and many in Washington 
were calling for something that could better coordinate various defense agencies. The National Security Act was the answer of the day. It spawned a new Defense Department, the United States Air Force, the National Security Council, and the CIA. They've all grown a little since then. Budgets and power have gone way up. President George W. Bush would later compare the effort to create the Department of Homeland Security to that 1947 act. But President Truman acted first, 64 years ago, today. And while the signing of the National Security Act of 1947 would take place 19 days after the crash landing of the Roswell weather balloon, it would become effective 55 days after it would be signed. Interestingly, former U.S. President Donald J. Trump, who would celebrate his 55th birthday 89 days before the September 11th attacks, would be born 55 weeks, 4 days after the Roswell, New Mexico incident. 55, summing out to 84. Imagine the value of Donald J. Trump. June 14, the Don Trump turns 55. Weather balloon, Area 51, the United States. September 11th, 2001. March 13, 1997, the Trump vaccine, the alien shot, a mandatory shot. West Palm Beach, the seaside collapse. The Freemasons, Joan, Ruth Bader, and Amy. Coney, 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 Barrett. 73 days after the Roswell incident, the National Securities Act would take effect, creating the CIA and the Air Force. The 33rd degree Freemason, 33rd US President, would consider it one of his biggest regrets. You know, I, I made two mistakes in my administration. One of them was setting up the CIA. Now, now we needed a central place for all the intelligence reports we were getting from all over the world, but, uh, well, it got out of hand. Now, they got an organization over there in Virginia now that's, uh, that's practically equal to the Pentagon in many ways. In my opinion, one Pentagon's one too many. As nearly as I can make out, those boys in the CIA, they, they don't just report on wars, they go out and make their own. And there's nobody to keep track of what they're doing. They spend billions of dollars stirring up trouble so they'll have something to report on. You know, they become a government all their own and they're all secret. And as far as I know, those birds don't have to report to anybody. And that's a very dangerous thing in a democratic society and it ought to be stopped. The people have a right to know. And if I was back in the White House right now, the people would know. Oh, yes, we discussed it at every conference that we had with the military. There's always things like that going on. Uh, flying saucers, and we've had other things, you know, if I'm not mistaken. See, the thing you've got to understand about a free government is that there's got to be a, a house cleaning every once in a while. I don't care what branch of the government's involved. Somebody's got to keep an eye on things, and when you can't do that house cleaning because everything's such a damn secret, well, then we're heading for something that the founding fathers didn't have in mind. Secrecy and a free democratic government don't mix. You've got to keep your eye on the military, and I don't give a damn if it's those birds in the Pentagon or the birds in the CIA. In the late 80s also, there appeared a very interesting series of documents that were called the Majestic 12 documents, which um, purported to... Uh, state that in the 1950s in the Eisenhower administration a secret group called Majestic 12 was created to fuse intelligence agencies under one authority that would investigate all matters relating to UFO matters and that this eventually became an autonomous government. You know they become a government all their own and they're all secret. And it's, uh, so what is the question So here? the question is do you have any information relating to surveillance of UFO um, community or these Majestic 12 documents? Not specifically, but I can tell you that the, uh, the UFO issue is the most frequently uh, requested kind of information under the Freedom of Information Act at the CIA. Wow. Truman had to deal with a lot of big issues, like the atomic bomb issue. Cold War with the Soviet Union, and Roswell was another issue that he had to deal with. It was an important issue, unlike the rumored crashes uh, in the FDR days, Truman was forced to publicly deal with a UFO, a UFO situation. There was uh, thousands of sightings, they were on the newspaper, this is July of 1947, all the time. I see him as the first president to actually deal with the UFO issue in a public sense. 
Suddenly Roswald occurs, they have a press leak, uh, it's starting to get picked up all over the country. He has to set up a, a situation where he's able to deal with it without getting dragged into it. And it seemed like he was successful. The, the, the story of, uh, if, if true, of him setting up the MJ-12 committee shortly after the event to deal with uh, the extraterrestrial intelligence, with crashes, with all this important stuff to keep it out of the, the public eye. Um, he, we, we know that he was, even though he put on a, a, a persona in the public of being very skeptical, one person asked him, there's a number of people who, not in, on the record, but in private asked him about UFOs and he would make statements like, I've never seen a, a blue cow and I hope I never see one. He, he came across as a great skeptic. But in behind the scenes, if you took a look at the, the Roswell incident, you could see that, that he was busy behind the scenes trying to deal with it and was trying to keep it out of the public but deal with the situation. You can see a lot of his top generals, Vandenberg, uh, all these twining, all these different people were involved that, that have been identified to be involved were in around Truman all the time. Uh, he met with them a couple days after for a, for a signing. Uh, he was able to handle a question about two days after Roswell occurred. Uh, it was one of the only two times the president's ever been questioned on UFOs and unfortunately the reporter asked him the wrong question, asked him all these reports of UFOs in the newspaper, um, have you got anything? And the president basically said, all I know is what I've read in the newspaper. The question went on to something else, Truman was able to escape it. So he was forced to keep this thing from blowing up, from people demanding an answer, and they did an demand answers from the Air Force and from the lower level, but he managed to keep the White House out of it, where he didn't have to address the subject himself. Now we know that he, even though there's really nothing written, a lot of the stuff um, in the Truman Library, uh, even a lot of the regular stuff, you'll see his presidential schedule for two days, they really don't have anything on his presidential schedule as to what he was doing. Now, although it shows that, that he was really not in the White House at the time, or that he wasn't really directly involved with any of the key Roswell people, Later on, we came to learn that, uh, for example, General Ramey, who came up with the weather balloon story, the White House record shows that Ramey and Truman never met. And yet, researcher George Filer at one point interviewed uh, Ramey's wife after Ramey had died, and Mrs. Ramey said, oh yes, she and her husband were very good friends with the president, and they'd met the president, on a, the president had visited them on a number of occasions. So here we have a, a sort of building a case where you see this cover up or this, they're dealing with the problem behind the scenes. And Truman did it excellently. He was very conscious of security. He set up the, uh, you know, the CIA and a bunch of other different agencies to deal with uh, intelligence matters and, and to crystallize things so that the White House knew what was going on. Whereas before it was sort of like very, various agencies all doing their own little thing. He was very skilled at doing this, at setting up a, a, a sort of a mechanism that could handle this kind of stuff in secrecy. A little bit about UFOs, and, I, and I'm going to, and I know, but it's because this is a place, and one of the things we need to recognize is that there is a carnival-esque period in which when you trace many of these conspiracies, they're going to move to the fantastic, the unreal, seemingly, the unbelievable, the religious, the miraculous, right? So UFOs have been with us a long time. This is the book of Ezekiel. I'm not gonna read it all. This is Ezekiel seeing of wheels within wheels. Ezekiel chapter one that many people who believe in UFOs point to that we've been visited for a long time. You can go and read it and it is, if you read it in a particular jaundiced eye or maybe unjaundiced eye, it sounds like a rocket. There's flames and spinning wheels and it moves from side to side and it hovers and it roars. So. Modern American uh, UFO culture comes from uh, Kenneth Arnold, a civilian pilot who claimed to see objects moving over Mount Rainier in 1947. Now notice, this is 1947, the founding of the... Now, is that a connection? I don't think so, but in the eyes of a conspiracy theorist, I can tell you that dates and times are gonna be very important and they're gonna echo, right? So in 1947, a public information officer named Walter Haught issued a press release that the Air Force had recovered pieces of a flying disc near Roswell, New Mexico. Then they issued a retraction and said they found a, an, a weather balloon, right? But it was off and running. 
The Air Force investigates UFOs from 1952 to 1970 in Project Blue Book, and this was a very hot thing in the 1970s. To analyze UFO data, Air Force investigated 12,618 cases. Most were explained, but a 701, 5.6% remain unexplained. UFOs are real enough that uniformed officers of the Air Force are going place to place investigating them. They are issuing a report in which they're finding some unexplained. It is not much of a step to say this is all a front for clearly men in black going from place to place and covering up UFOs, right? So the next step of alien contact is abductions, right? Betty and Barney Hill saw a UFO on September 19, 1961 in New Hampshire. They see a craft in figures. They realize that their drive home, normally four hours, took more than seven. This is the missing time that is so much a part of UFO culture. After this encounter, Betty has a long series of nightmares and physical symptoms. Betty and Barney claim they remember exactly what happened. The ship landed, they were taken on board, they were probed here and there, this is what it looked like. The Greys become this popular figure, right? You know, by the 70s, people are talking about the Roswell as the smoking gun as the Uf, uh, UFO movement, proof the Air Force is covering up alien contact. There are release documents from a group called Majestic 12 that is alleging that there was an agreement at pick your Air Force Base, Wright-Patterson, Andrews, in which there were alliances formed between the UFOs and the United States government, right? Bill Cooper is a writer who is a really leading conspiracy voice who's, who's now dead, but he was a leading voice about this deep conspiracy in the government, that there's a conspiracy that the government had made a deal in, in, in agreement with aliens in exchange for technology to allow aliens to kidnap and torture American people. And that the abduction movement, the UFOs, the CIA, all of this is a cover-up of a giant UFO arrangement, right? So it combines the Illuminati, the Bilderbergers, the New World Order, and other groups into a kind of super conspiracy. And there are other arguments that the UFO conspiracy is a conspiracy, a conspiracy of the Air Force. So the Air Force is putting out stories about UFOs so that when people see test aircraft in the air, they don't say, oh, that's the F-37 stealth fighter they say it's a UFO. And so this is a cover-up to get people to believe in UFOs so they aren't paying attention to what's really going on in areas like Area 51. Area 51 is an area on a government map that no one knew about prior to conspiracy theorists saying that that is Groom Lake where they're testing the UFOs that they got from the aliens by allowing them to abduct people and take their bodily organs, right? But have you guys heard of Area 51, right? So there's a thing that you know about that's on a government map, literally listed as Area 51, because the name is top secret, because we have a national security state that takes large parts of the United States territory and says, this is Area 51. We can't tell you what we're doing here. We can't tell you what we're spending here, but it's to keep you safe. Trust us. The other one is that the UFOs are a cover-up, because what they're really doing is they're they are taking people and probing them and torturing them and doing medical experiments on them or their cattle. Cattle mutilation comes in here now. But the cover-up is, rather than it being black helicopters of the United States government kidnapping people, drugging them and torturing them to do medical experiments on them, instead, it is UFOs. So whoever's out in the cattle ranch gets mad at UFOs and not at the United States government. So yes, it's a conspiracy, but it's a conspiracy of a conspiracy hiding a bigger conspiracy. This is tying into 9-11 being an inside job, right? This is, it is unsurprising given what I've laid out, all of the pieces in the Lego box that are there for our students or fellow Americans when they go searching on YouTube or they watch a show or hear a talk. These are the things they're putting together and to come to the conclusion that this is an inside job. The claim that Bush knew echoes claims that FDR was behind the Pearl Harbor attack, that he so wanted to get involved in war in Europe that he allowed, either allowed Pearl Harbor to have or actually took a stronger hand in it in a even harder to prove conspiracy, right? So, so many of these um, claims about 9-11, that there were planted explosives, that there was no plane that hit the Pentagon, moving to levels of Luciferianism, that these were 
These were actually missiles and not planes with holographic planes around them, depending on how far you want to stretch the kind of unreality and the, the bounds of reality that they're going to use. But part of it is evidence, and depending on who you're talking to, they might just be having an evidential debate. What would it take? How does a building collapse? Will steel melt? These kinds of things. But there are some people for whom that debate about the evidentiary basis of 9-11 or any one of these is a cover for a deeper anxiety. The anxiety of, they lie to us, trust no one. And that the conversation about 9-11 is only the tip of an iceberg of all of this other stuff that's behind it, of how we think about democracy, how we think about how the American government works and our relationship to it. On July 13th, 2018, a date written out, 137, which sums out to 137, matching the value of Don Trump vaccination, triple six, mind control, and the Francis Bacon cipher. C-SPAN 3 would shoot conspiracy culture in American history, which sums out to 424, which matches the value of the strategic defense initiative and Donald Trump, 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 who sums to 424 across multiple ciphers, ciphers, ciphers. In the, in the Hebrew religion, uh, it's all very clear. So the Messiah Moshe, so if you take that name, they're they're written, 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 you see where it adds up 424. If you take your name, Donald Trump, and then there's your name, it adds up to 424. It's, a, it's a, something that is very, very unbelievable. Yeah. unbelievable. What does that mean? It's, it's like, like you have the same numbers as my right. Messiah, you know? It's like, meaning, meaning, yes. meaning, it's like not good, it's like best. It's, it's like, like, it's like, it's like a miracle. Why 424? It's like, Name of Messiah. And that's, the, that's his name, Messiah. The Messiah comes out to 424. No, no, it's, it's not the number. It's exactly the number. Your name, your name and the numbers, it adds up to his name. So it's 424, 424, and the Jews. So it's like Messiah is the person that's come to save the whole world. So it's like you're the savior of being because that's for your blood. It's amazing. We, we just saw that we're like, wow. <laughs> it's amazing, huh? It can't hurt. can't hurt. C SPAN 3 would shoot the episode on July 13th, 2018, from the 9-11 Memorial and Museum, which sums out to 72, matching the value of 2018, the White Rabbit, Lizard King, President Trump, Don's COVID vaccine, the United Nations, Agenda 21 sacrifice, the Jesuit order, the COVID-19 vax pass, mass vaccination site, the Supreme Court, High Priestess, the 27 Club, Amy V. Coney Barrett, and Friday, August 13th, 2021. The show would first be shot 29 days after Donald Trump would celebrate his 72nd birthday. Exactly 3,761 weeks after his birth. And while 3,761 sums out to the State of Israel apprentice Donald Trump, March 11, the White House, Rose Garden, governmental control, nuclear physics. And jet fuel melts steel beams. 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 29 sums out to Flag Day, which is celebrated on June 14th, Donald Trump's birthday. It matches the value of C, span three, purple Trump. Good luck. Let them prove somebody was guilty. Cyborg Stage Museum, the Trump QAnon or Vatican Jab 666 in Roman numeral, Biden, Gates, and the Devil. You find this in the same ciphers, where you'll find 137 sums out to the 27 Club President, President Donald John Trump, Barack Obama, and Joe Biden. The District of Columbia, Judge Wolf in Sheep's Clothing, Judge Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Anthony Michael Bourdain. President Harry S. Truman. 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 9-11 was an inside job. The men in black covering up UFOs. And the numbers 1, 3, and 7. seven now, the other nice seven, thing about seven, this number is that if, if ever, that if you decide to want to get in touch with some aliens on, on some distant planet uh, going around uh, 
orbiting around a star, perhaps a bit like our, our own sun, it would be one of the numbers you would signal to these aliens if you, if, to indicate that we have a, a scientific and technologically capable civilization on this planet. 137 months, 137 weeks, and 137 days after. Thus compromised, the trusses give way. The South Tower lasts only 56 minutes before it succumbs at 9.59 a.m. building has just collapsed as if a demolition team set off when you see the old demolitions of these old buildings it's My folded God. down on itself and it is not there anymore that should be it it Thanks has very completely much, collapsed the whole side has collapsed the whole there? building has collapsed the whole building has collapsed the building has collapsed that's the southern tower you're talking exactly. about exactly the second building that we witnessed the airplane enter had been the top half had been as if a demolition team set off when you see the old demolitions of these old buildings. It My folded God. down on itself and it is... Several minutes of pitch darkness. What did you see in the streets then? Uh, it was a very deep gray smoke. It was, it was, it honestly looked like a bit of a nuclear winter, the type of thing you see in the movies with, with ash all over the ground on top of cars, on police cars, on windows. This is as close as we can get to the base of the World Trade Center. You can see the firemen assembled here, the police officers, FBI agents, and you can see the two towers. A huge explosion now raining debris on all of us. We better get out of the way. And we could hear people shouting, a third plane, a third plane, and then there was an explosion, another plane, another plane, and then there was an explosion. That's right. Uh, and, and I was outside during that explosion. Immediately, we all ran. I was running backwards to see if I could see anything. We all went under. There was a little stairwell to go under a building. About 20 of us went under there, and we were just waiting. And for about 10 minutes, it was pitch black outside. All we could see was smoke, and it was in our faces. We were all coughing because there's just such soot and smoke everywhere. All right, Maria Bartiromo, uh, stay at where you are, if you will, and uh, uh, AP says two planes what? Two planes total? All right, so AP is saying there was no third plane to hit the South Tower. Is that right? Okay, well, that's a possibility. We had no official confirmation. We did have people we heard Something in the background ignited there, though. That, maybe they had, that, that was an incredible... That was an incredible explosion. Uh, and that does not cause from a... I, I agree with you. I think it was the third plane, but again, oh, no, it we could have been something. It could have been something that was planted. Or, or a bomb planted yeah, in the right. building. Yeah. What happened? It was in an explosion. It was in the lobby, and it fucking, this, the third explosion, the whole lobby collapsed on us. What was it like? What was it like? Horrible. It's like Horrible. hell. The whole, don't know. the whole building just collapsed on us inside the lobby. Is that a secondary explosion? Yes, it was. But that was the plan from? Yeah, definitely a secondary explosion. But we was inside waiting to go upstairs. And on the way upstairs, the whole fucking thing blew. And we just, we just collapsed from everybody inside the lobby. Similar to the first tower coming down, secondary? I don't know about the first one, but I know the second one. Was, it was terrible. Then there was a third one, too, after that one. Yes. Everybody was inside the building waiting to go upstairs. And they, they just they just let loose. Everything just let loose inside the building. So what, what you told me is that there was plane or whatever hit the building, and then a the secondary explosion. It was like three explosions after that. We came in after the after the fire. We came when the fire was going on already. We was in the staging area inside the building, okay. waiting to go upstairs. Oh, I and they oh, 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 the whole lobby collapsed on the lobby inside. Joining me is Jack Kelly. Now he is a foreign correspondent war correspondent and just came back from Israel. He has some information about these attacks. Jack, what can you tell us happened first in New York? Um, apparently what appears to happen was that at the same time two planes hit the building, that there, that the FBI most likely thinks that there was a car or truck packed with explosives underneath the buildings which also exploded at the same time and brought both of them down. Now that's the first time we're hearing that. So two planes and explosives that were in the building, is that correct? That is the working theory at this point. That is still unconfirmed. That is what the FBI is going on at this point. 
Now, here in Washington, can you tell us what happened with this jet? We believe it's an American Airlines jet that was going from Dulles International Airport to Los Angeles. Can you tell us about that? At approximately 9.45, the plane hit, hit the side of the building over there. There are, there are confirmed deaths at this point. Um, this is thought to be part of a coordinated attack. This is the first time that U.S. officials will actually say that this is part of a coordinated attack, and I don't think it's exactly over yet. Is this, it is not over yet? I don't believe it's actually over yet. They're taking precautions. Within the last couple of minutes, the White House has, has approved sending two aircraft carrier battle groups, one into the Chesapeake Bay, the other outside of the New York City area, to prepare and defend for possible, for possible future attacks. Now, Jack, as these battleships are headed, headed out, d does this mean war? Lawrence Eagleburger, the former Secretary of State, just told us that this is a declaration of war as far as he is concerned. He said this is the biggest attack against the U.S. since Pearl Harbor more than 60 years ago. Osama bin Laden appears to be the number one suspect at this point, though nobody will go on the record and say this. Only Osama bin Laden has the sophistication to carry off a multiple coordinated attack. I've sat with his people and they've said that this is something that they would like to do. As recently as just a month and a half ago or so, isn't that correct, when you sat with Osama bin Laden's people? Um, in Dubai, and one of them at that point said that they were considering more attacks against the U.S. Also, what's interesting, three weeks ago, a U.S. official warned the Taliban through a third person that should there be any more attacks that the U.S. would respond militarily. At this point now, the um, Pentagon and CIA and the FBI have identified a possible 100 targets within Afghanistan to possibly strike back. We are now preparing for war. Is that what I'm understanding? That um, nobody will actually state that at this point, but there are always situations ready and battle plans ready just in case something were to happen. You know, this has been warned for quite some time. It's just a matter of when it would take place, and it took place today. Jack Kelly, foreign correspondent for USA Today, who has covered several wars and has just returned from Israel where there was a car bombing. He is reporting that the number one suspect is Osama bin Laden. 137 months, 137 weeks, and 137 days after the deadliest terrorist attack in U.S. history would take place. 137, summing up to September 11th, 2001, the World Trade Center attack. 9-11 was an inside job. The worst is yet to come. The World Trade Center attack was a controlled demolition. The United States Department of Defense in the Francis Bacon Cipher case is important. We are Q. Q. The great architect of the universe. The campfire that took place 17 years, 58 days after 9-11. Nazis false flag. The 47th problem of Euclid, his number, is 600. Three score and six. The numbers in purple never lie. The 27 Club, Justice Scalia. Judge Scalia sacrificed across multiple ciphers. Joan Ruth Bader Ginsburg is the 2020 GOAT. Protocols of the Elders of Zion and Donald Trump. 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 On February 12, 2016, 137 months, 137 weeks, 137 days after the September 11th attacks, Ruth Bader Ginsburg's best buddy, Antonin Gregory Scalia, who shares a time span of 270 days with Donald Trump, would fall asleep. And on the following day, February 13th, 2016, Justice Scalia would be found dead. There would be no foul play found. Breaking news right off the top here at 6 o'clock. Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia dead at the age of 79. Brilliant, sometimes controversial, always conservative. Let's get right to Rich Reeve, who is following this breaking news from the live desk. Rich, do we know how he died? Uh, yeah, natural causes, they're saying, Kimberly. The U.S. Marshal Service confirmed Scalia's death shortly before 4 this afternoon. The authorities believe the 79-year-old associate justice, as we said, died of natural causes. He was visiting a private residence in the Big Bend area of South Texas. A U.S. Marshal Service spokesperson says Scalia arrived at that ranch on Friday and attended a private party with about 40 people. Now, when he didn't appear for breakfast, someone went to his room and found the body. A federal official who's asked not to be named says there's no evidence of foul play. Conspiracy theories about the circumstances of Justin Antonin Scalia's death. Some of them have been fueled by comments from Donald Trump. 
Jan Crawford is at the Supreme Court showing how confusion and lingering doubts got Trump's attention. Jan, good morning. Well, you know, these theories, Charlie, really started shortly after uh, Scalia's death. And, you know, despite clarifications from the owner of the ranch and the judge that declared Scalia dead, they are still getting traction. They say they found the pillow on his face, which is a pretty unusual place to find a pillow. For the second time this week, Donald Trump expressed skepticism about how Justice Scalia died. I mean, no autopsy being planned? You know, you're really talking about the balance of the court. That's big stuff. This is wow. history. The suggestion that Scalia may have been a victim of foul play took hold in part because a state judge declared Scalia dead over the phone. Washington Post is reporting that before he died, Justice Antonin Scalia was on a getaway with high-ranking members of an elite hunting fraternity that dates back to 1695. They say that Scalia was a member of a secretive Austrian society called the International Order of the St. Hubertus. This secretive society of elite hunters. The International Order of St. Hubertus is an Austrian society that dates back to the, to the 1600s. A review of public records show that some of its members were with Justice Scalia at the West Texas ranch where he spent his last days. The International Order of St. Hubertus, which was founded in 1695, 1695, Summing out to the International Order of St. Hubertus, matching the value of the 79-year-old Antonin G. Scalia, 9-11 sacrifice. Abraham Lincoln couldn't keep his mouth shut. He would be shot by John Wilkes Booth, who sums out to 79-9-9-1695, also sums out to the conspiracy theory pushing Donald Trump. There's no such thing as a coincidence. Donald J. Trump, what sport? The COVID-19 vaccine global agenda. This is the final solution to all the problems. 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 The International Order of St. Hubertus is a Freemason hunting club that is made up of elite wildlife conservationists. I wonder what they hunt. The American chapter of this international order is known as the San Francisco Bohemian Club which sums out to 227. Matching the value of the Freemason Hunting Club, Cornerstone Ritual, the 27 Club, Antonin Gregory Scalia, who would die 27 days before his 80th birthday, the Freemasonic Order, Zionist Plot, and Bill Clinton, who always kinda likes Scalia, the 27 Club Justice's death coming exactly 27 weeks from Bill Clinton's 70th year or 840th month birthday, Described as an elite invite-only playhouse with members that date back to the foundations of this country. The world elite gather here to discuss the future of the nation and perform mock human child sacrifices to Moloch. You know what you're talking about? Yeah. A fraud? No, it wasn't a fraud, but I'll be glad to talk to you if you'll shut up and let me talk. Now. A fraud? Let me tell you something. I'll tell you a couple of stories about fraud. The Bohemian Club. The, as you say, the Bohemian Club? That's where all those rich Republicans go up and stand naked against redwood trees, right? I've never been to the Bohemian Club, but you ought to go. It'd be good for you. Get some fresh air. The 27 Club non-Jew Catholic Zionist Justice Scalia, who matched the value of Dick, 11, and Yahweh ritual, will be proclaimed dead on the morning of February 13th, 2016, the 44th day of the year, 27 weeks, 4 days, after the Honolulu-born 44 and sitting president of the time, 54th birthday, and while the death of the Justice would come one month, 27 days, after Pope Francis would turn 79-127, summing out to the Bavarian Illuminati. Meet your maker, Judge Antonin Scalia, Francis Sacrifice, Judge Amy Barrett, and Kamala Devi Harris, who shares a time span of 266 days with Amy Barrett. The justice would fall 144 days after the 266th day of 2015, September 23rd, the day the 266th Pope would visit the White House for the first time. Mr. President, Together with their fellow citizens, American Catholics are committed to building a society 
which is truly tolerant and inclusive, to safeguarding the rights of individuals and communities, and to rejecting every form of injustice discrimination. 144, sending out to... I'm going to keep it 100. Yo, Barry, you did it, my nigga. You did it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good night. 144 also sums out to to the RMS Titanic the alien invasion Judge Scalia sudden cardiac arrest Judge Ginsburg cancer royal sacrifice D Trump the Joker the U.S. flag nine is the key the mark of the beast the Jesuit order the Taliban four and seven repeating eights and President Biden the 47th U.S. vice president at the time who would celebrate his 74th year or 888th month birthday 40 weeks after the death of the 79-year-old Jesse Scalia, 40 summing out to oh shit, Joe Biden, Francis, the Vatican, Cherubim, the Anunnaki, Roswell End Times, The Storm, Donald Trump, Master Plan, and 79 summing out to 44th U.S. President Jesse Scalia's 2016 death, Zachary, Keith Hubbard, rigged for Trump, RBG, dies of cancer, the Joe Biden family, Queen Elizabeth II, Pope, Jorge Mario, horse medication, inoculation campaign, and meat. The quagmire. Death! Oh, thank God you're here! Listen, you gotta send me back in time again so I can marry Lois. Man, it's been a busy day. Dick Cheney, the chairman of Halliburton, shot Supreme Court Justice Scalia in a hunting accident, and a bullet went right through him and killed Carl Rove and Tucker Carlson. Fox would release the episode titled Meet the Quagmires, rated 8.4 stars on IMDb, 456 weeks before the no foul play found death of Justice Antonin Scalia in 2016. 456, summing out to Scalia, 2016, as well as Scalia and the Jesuit Order, Antonin Gregory Scalia, predictive programming, a very patriotic, and Amy, 1776, 1776, the height of the tallest building in the United States. Well, it's official. One World Trade Center in New York is the tallest building in the U.S. It takes the top spot from Chicago's Sears Tower, which stands at 1,451 feet. One World Trade will stand at 1,776 feet. Officials were questioning a 408-foot needle on top of the tower. Today, they determined it will count at the total height. In 1776, the age that Amy Coney Barrett, whose birthday shares a time span of 227 days with September 11, would turn in the age of COVID-19 on the 19th anniversary of the September 11th attacks. In New York, presidential campaign activities were put on pause for a few hours this morning as the candidates, both of them, paused to recognize the 19th anniversary of attacks of September 11th, 2001. President Trump spoke in Shanksville, Pennsylvania this morning while former Vice President Joe Biden went to Ground Zero in Manhattan and then went to Pennsylvania this afternoon. Then in a sudden addition to the president's schedule, the White House announcing a new Middle East peace agreement, making Bahrain the latest country to agree to normalize relations with Israel. President Trump spoke about that a short while ago. It's just a very historic day, a very important day, and so interesting that it's on 9-11. We're going to have a lot more on that in just a moment, though. The nation continues on the grips of the coronavirus crisis with 6.4 million American cases and more than 193,000 dead. But the president says the tide is turning. That is something one of his chief medical experts, Dr. Anthony Fauci, disagreed with just this afternoon. I really do believe we're rounding the corner right now. I hope, really think we're gonna, we're rounding the final turn. I have to disagree with that. 456 also zooms out to the secret key, the first 144 digits of pi. Interestingly, the math integer pi, which is red, 3.14, and whose first 144 digits sum to 666 matches the value of justice. Antonin Scalia in the Francis Bacon Cipher, while in the reverse, Francis Bacon Cipher, you'll find the value of Justice Antonin Gregory Scalia. Conspiracy sums to six, 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 which coincidentally is the acreage of the ranch where he would be found dead after a long day. 
of being hunted. The release of the Family Guy episode, Meet the Quagmires, would come exactly 22 months, 7 days after the July 13th a day, written out, 137, 2005, Germany and Switzerland, premiere, avoiding crashes, 127 months before the death of Scalia. Have you even shot one of these things before? The whole 17 years we've known each other, I've been sneaking off to go on little hunting trips around the world. No, I don't even know what the fuck a quail is. I feel totally ridiculous. It's like, why do I have to be in camouflage so the big bad quail doesn't see me? No. Like, why can't we hunt something cool like a hawk or an eagle, something with some talons? That'd be awesome. You mean something like big game, even yeah. like a gorilla? Gorilla. Or a rhinoceros? Or a fucking human being? That'll get you jacked up. That's a little heavy. I mean, like, you're hunting a human being right now. Most dangerous game. Like a worthy adversary, not a human being that's armed, oh, but a clever, arm. a clever human being who knows the jungle like or the woods. Ah! There's something not right about these guys. What do you mean? I mean, it's time to send them home. Fact, don't do anything crazy. You just relax. I'm just gonna scare them off. All right. One hour, 59 minute movie, 159, summing out to the day that would see the death of Justice Scalia. He died of an apparent heart attack over the weekend at a ranch in Texas. The property's owner says that Scalia went quail hunting on Friday. He went to bed early that night saying he felt tired and wanted to get a good night's sleep. Here's how the owner described finding him the next day. He was uh, very peaceful in, his, in, his, in the bed. He had obviously passed away with no difficulty at all in the middle of the night. Scalia was a devout Catholic. A priest was brought in to administer last rites. 159 also sums out to Donald Trump, matching the value of Donald J. Trump's sacrifice in a number we have already connected to the death of the author of the Hand of God goal, Diego Maradona. Tributes are poured in for the footballer Diego Maradona, who's died of a heart attack at the age of 60. The Argentine president, Alberto Fernandez, has declared three days of national mourning, saying Maradona had taken his country to the top of the world. Uniquely talented, deeply troubled, and at times simply untouchable, Diego Maradona played football that defied belief. Chaga to his left and Valdano to his left. You won't need any of them. Oh, you have to say that's magnificent. Argentina against England in the 1986 World Cup quarter-final and what was later voted the goal of the century. And yet, just four minutes earlier, Maradona had become one of sport's most notorious cheats. Maradona! Replays showed he'd scored with his arm, or the hand of God as he infamously described it, but Maradona had no regrets. I couldn't reach it and, and Shilton was already there, so I, I couldn't head it, so I did like that. I believe it's um, a craftiness. It's not cheating. Maradona's spellbinding skills propelled Argentina to the trophy, the pinnacle of a remarkable journey that began in the slums outside Buenos Aires. At his first World Cup in 1982 came signs of his flawed genius, making an impact for the right and wrong reasons. After a world record transfer to Barcelona came more magic, but chaos and controversy were never far away. Strangely, the death of Justice Antonin Scalia would mirror the near death of another. An event that would take place 213 days after the premiere of Wedding Crashers 213. A way to write out February 13th, the day that would see the death of Justice Scalia. Scalia. And a day also written out 132, which sends out to Justice Scalia. Scalia much is the value of February 11, 2006, six, six, which would be the day that... President Dick Cheney has accidentally shot and injured a friend with whom he was hunting. Birdshot fired from the vice president's weapon, apparently wounded a fellow hunter. We were shooting a covey of quail. Uh, the vice president and two others got out of the car to uh, walk up the covey. Bird flushed. Uh, the vice president... Uh, took aim at the bird and shot and unfortunately uh, 
Mr. Whittington was in the in the line of fire and got peppered pretty well. I think people are making the raw conclusion about a tragic accident. And I, the vice president was involved in a uh, a terrible accident, and uh, it, it 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 profoundly affected him. Yesterday, when he was here in the Oval Office, I saw the deep concern he had about a person who he wounded. And he, uh, again, I thought yesterday's explanation was a, a very strong and important explanation to make to the American people. And now our concerns are directed toward the recovery of our friend. I knew Harry Whittington when I was the governor of Texas down there in Austin. The fine man. I thought the vice president handled the issue just fine. Uh, he went to, uh, and I thought his explanation yesterday was a powerful explanation. Now, this is a man who uh, likes the outdoors and he likes to hunt. And uh, he heard a bird flush and he turned and pulled the trigger and saw his friend get wounded. And it was a, a deeply traumatic moment for him and obviously for the. It's a tragic moment for Harry Whittington. And so I thought his explanation yesterday was a very strong and powerful explanation. And I'm satisfied with the explanation he gave. Thank you for coming. Adios. Thank you all. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Hey, guys, both of us good work. It's not just that Dick Cheney didn't call up the president after this happened and say, you know, uh, FYI, George, I just shot a guy in the face, but you'd like to know. <laughs> it's that George Bush when it became apparent that Dick Cheney wasn't going to behave like a responsible adult in this matter, didn't call up Dick Cheney and say, Dick, get your butt onto TV, take responsibility for this, and stand up like a man right now. But apparently he can't because Dick Cheney outranks him. I, I, there are plenty of things to criticize here. If you shoot a guy in the face, you stand up the next day and you take responsibility for it. You say, I did it, it was my... Listen, they, they blamed Whitaker for, the, for several days here. The man is lying in a hospital with... Whitaker. With, 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 I'm sorry, you know, the victim. They blamed yeah. the victim for, right, for several did. days, laying in the hospital with bird shot in his heart <laughs> muscle, and they're pretending it's he his fault he got shot. For many years my family had been friends of the Armstrongs down in Kennedy County. We have visited, visited them for over 25 years and have had some wonderful trips and visits and pleasant memories that we cherish forever. <clears throat> However, this past weekend encompassed all of us in a cloud of misfortune and sadness that is not easy to explain, <clears throat> especially to those who are not familiar with the great sport of quail hunting. This is not complicated. He, he exercised poor judgment in discharging his firearm. He shot a friend of his. <clears throat> Accidents do and will happen. And that's what happened last Friday. And let, let, let's review this. I, I uh, didn't think that he needed to tell the press. Well, actually, the White House press office would take care of that for him. My first reaction is, my friend Harry has been shot. Hey, everybody, somebody shot Harry. Oh, yeah, it was me. My family and I are deeply sorry for all that Vice President Cheney and his family have had to go through this past week. We send our love and respect to them as they deal with with situations that are much more serious than what we've had this week. And we hope that he will continue to come to Texas and seek the relaxation that he deserves. <laughs> you know, that we've got to take care of him. Yes, let's rush him to the hospital, then let's blame him for the accident. It's also important to get the story out as accurately as possible, so I, as the guy who actually shot him, would want no part of that, apparently. And this is a complicated story. Well, Tucker, you're a hunter, right? Yes, I am. Dick Cheney, the chairman of Halliburton, shot Supreme Court Justice Scalia in a hunting accident, and a bullet went right through him and killed Carl Rove and Tucker Carlson. So let me run a couple of things by you here. It was 5.30 at night, or after 5.30 when this happened. There, it was dying light out there. Right. Cheney, by his own account, says he wheeled around into a setting sun that was setting right behind uh, the, the, the victim here, Harry. And, you know, so he was shooting into a setting sun, which seems right. a little silly to me. Apparently also shooting downhill. 
at the victim, which right. is also a no-no as far as well, I know. Actually, it shooting... seems like terrible judgment well, here. Well, maybe. I mean, shooting in the setting sun is actually preferable because the bird, of course, is silhouetted against the sun. But well, upland bird shooting... If you can't see a human being well, upland sun, bird shooting you're going to see a tiny little helpless it's bird. It's dangerous. It's dangerous under any circumstances. You've got all these dogs running around, for one thing. It's running through your legs. Often, you know, you're not exactly sure what's a dog, what's a bird, what's a human being. Yeah, I mean, it's a risky thing to do. You've got to be really careful. That's why people don't drink beer before they do it. Yeah. How's Mr. Whittington? Well, uh, the good news is he's doing very well today. Uh, I talked with him yesterday after they discovered the uh, heart problem. The good news is Mr. Winnie, uh, Whittington has a very healthy heart. As I said yesterday, probably healthier than mine. However, some of the bird shot ha appears to have uh, moved and lodged into a, a part of his heart, causing the atrial fib and what we would say is a minor heart attack. But uh, that appears now to have been pretty well resolved, and uh, the reporting today is very good. Tell me what happened. Well, basically, we, um, we were hunting quail. We began 26 years ago today with the end to Nelson Mandela's nearly three decades behind bars. On February 11, 1990, Mandela walked out of Victor Verster Prison in South Africa a free man. For 27 years, he was locked up because he dared to challenge South Africa's apartheid government, one responsible for atrocious human rights abuses. Mandela's release will become a major step in ending apartheid in the country. This is called the Mandela Effect. And it's a belief that specific details from the past are being altered or changed. The most famous one is the, the children's book, The Bernstein Bears. This title of this children's book, The Bernstein Bears, this book I did read a bunch when I was a kid. So I had an idea about how it was spelled. And so I just had this kind of unconscious feeling of how it was spelled. And in this case, there was just a one letter change from Bernstein, S-T-E-I-N, to Bernstein, S-T-A-I-N. The easy answer is just that you may have overlooked it your entire life. Th then that could definitely very well be true, but there is, there's another aspect of it that when I, for me, for instance, and I think other people, when you see the A instead of the E, there's kind of like a, a feeling of like, that doesn't look right. Match it with the memories of you, the, me for looking at this book so many times and growing up with it. There's like this kind of dissonance, cognitive dissonance. Another example of this effect is, of course, the name itself, named after Nelson Mandela. Some strongly remember Nelson Mandela dying in prison in the 90s instead of 2013. Now, this example can be proven, but one thing that is impossible to prove is the memory itself. You can't disprove a person having the memory of it being the other way. You know what I mean? So for a person who has this memory that this thing is wrong, even if you show them that, look, it's this other way. For them, if the memory is not like that, it's not going to prove it to them. You know, they're gonna say, okay, I get, I see what you're saying, but it feels totally wrong and it makes me feel kind of crazy to look at that A. Madiba, as his supporters called him, went on to serve as South Africa's first black president from 94 to 99. Mandela passed away in 2013 at the age of 95. Turning now to our throwback three, that's a quick look at some of the other noteworthy stories from this week in history. 13 years ago today, Vice President Dick Cheney shot his hunting buddy in the face. Look at that headline, duck, it's Dick. Cheney was quail hunting with Harry Whittington in Texas when he accidentally fired a shotgun, not realizing it was pointed at Whittington. Now, needless to say, this was an embarrassing distraction for the White House. Cheney called it one of the worst days of his life. Thankfully, Whittington did recover from his wounds. And on February 13th, 1984, a new page was written in the royal family fairy tale when Buckingham Palace announced Princess Diana was pregnant with her second child. It was front page news in London and all across the UK. The odds at the time were set four to five on a girl, even money on a boy 50 to one against twins. Of course, it was a boy. Prince Harry was born on September 15th of that year. All right, how about we get to this? The drama that played out on the small screen and tabloids everywhere. The 1990 divorce between Donald J. Trump and Ivana Trump. Here is Richard Roth. It's like the buildings they name, the hotels or casino, or like the helicopter or the airline. It's like the football team or the board game, another deal in the Trump tradition. The greatest, the biggest, the best. This time, though, it's a breakup. Now under development, the Trump divorce. Donald and Ivana are in negotiations. It was a storybook merger, or so it seemed, the billionaire builder and the Czechoslovak model. 
married for almost 13 years, the public personification of marital bliss. I always said I'm a traditional girl. Donna is the boss and I like it that way. If it's a meal, she'll make a meal. If it's a family, she'll raise a family. And if it's running the Plaza Hotel, it's running the Plaza Hotel. Donald Trump reportedly walked out this week saying the marriage was no longer working and hoping to settle under terms of a prenuptial contract guaranteeing Ivana the house, the kids, and more than $20 million. Ivana has rejected the deal through a lawyer calling the contract unconscionable and fraudulent. This is so sudden, the only New York tribunal that's heard the case is the court of public opinion. Donald's definitely getting the better end. She gets 20 million, what's he worth, 16 billion? That $25 million should be a fair settlement under any circumstances. It's not just a marriage that's on the line, it's Donald Trump's reputation as a deal maker in a business he'll find brand new. And as Zsa, Zsa Gabor once observed, you never really know a man until you have divorced him. Richard Roth, CBS News, New York. It took more than a year for the divorce battle to end, and it was all very public. It's estimated Donald Trump ended up paying Ivana 14 to $20 million. She's also got a mansion in Greenwich, Connecticut. And now he's running for president. And now he's running for president. <laughs>
um, for, for decades in this country. It would have been a big shock if Justice uh, Barrett had done something else, but the fact that you know a conservative justice uh, didn't even think it was worth referring it to the full court suggests that this issue, at least, is pretty uncontroversial. And so this could impact future lawsuits around vaccine mandates, because we're seeing more and more of those throughout the country, whether it's California mandating teachers and other school employees get vaccinated or submit to regular testing, or the Pentagon with active duty troops. Th that's right. And, and I think um, that issue, at least, is probably going to be pretty uncontroversial. You know, vaccine mandates uh, by a university, by a state, by the military, uh, I don't think is going to be uh, uh, difficult for the courts to uphold. The really tricky issue is the one that's heading up the road, which is what happens, and it's already starting to happen, what happens when a state bans uh, a vaccine mandate or bans a mask mandate and a locality, as, as Congressman O'Rourke was just talking about, you know, what happens when a locality says, we want one? That conflict that's a much tougher issue, and I think that's the big fight that's going to be going on for months. 132, all systems out to mandatory vaccination. vaccination. Matching the value of the last trumpet secret key pie formula and the day that Harry Whittington would be selfishly shot in the face. February 11, a day written out. 211, 2006. This is why you'll find 456, all systems out to Antonin Gregory Scalia. And Harry Whittington, Whittington matches the value of Justice Antonin Gregory Scalia was a sacrifice to the devil, devil, devil. an entity he believed to be very real and very busy, busy, busy. Tonight, <laughs> is the scamp making his stamp? Well, the devil walks among us. In a recent interview, Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia said, quote, did I mispronounce his name? No. I even believe in the devil. Yeah, he's a real person. Hey, come on, that standard Catholic doctrine. Every Catholic believes that. Well, then case closed. I've always, as a kid, I believed in the devil and then Jedediah. We had President Barack Hussein Obama. <laughs> and I realized he is the devil. Uh, is the devil a singular beast or is it like uh, this kind of force of evil? I'm, I'm not sure, but I take, I take issue with Justice Scalia's proposition. Right. That, that the mm -hmm. devil is a person. Right. I believe he's actually a fallen angel right. cast down into the earth, mm -hmm. which is a really bizarre choice. Yeah. Uh, if, if I do mention it, God, that was weird. That was an I cast him <laughs> down into the earth. You could I, cast him anywhere else. Uh, yeah. Why, why give him to us? We, were, we weren't doing anything wrong. I know we can't establish a religious test for office, but if you believe we're living in the end times like Michelle Bachman does, we get to take away the car key. <laughs> yes, let Jesus take the wheel. If you think the world is about to end, that's your right, but you don't get to vote on next year's budget because it doesn't concern you. Now, this past Saturday, Congresswoman Michelle Bachman announced that President Obama is sending arms to terrorists and said, rather than seeing this as a negative, we need to rejoice. Maranatha, come Lord Jesus, his day is at hand. But she's not the only person in Washington who'd be more comfortable on American Horror Story. In an interview this week, Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia says he believes the devil is a real person who's running around getting people to not believe in God. What can I say? I started to blush. <laughs> blush and laugh, because reasonable people, you know them. They usually see Michelle Bachman as a total loon, but Scalia as a serious intellectual, when actually they're the exact same idiot. Scalia says in the interview that he's puzzled that the devil is all over the New Testament, but we don't see him around anymore. But you know, this devil not being around anymore thing, it's, it's, it's not something that puzzles me. But somehow the lack of Beazelbub sightings positively mystifies the leading legal mind in conservative America. Scalia says, in the Gospels, the devil is doing all sorts of things. He's making pigs run off cliffs. He's possessing people and whatnot. And that doesn't happen very much anymore. 
And what is Justice Scalia's theory as to why we don't see the devil anymore? Is it the logical answer that fictions like the devil are in the Bible because it was written before the age of science when humans didn't know where the sun went at night and is obviously a reflection of mankind's thinking in his intellectual infancy? Of course not, that makes sense. <laughs> What Scalia said about the devil is, he used to be all over the New Testament. What happened to him? He got wilier. Um, these, these are going out over television. These, these are going out. This is, yes, this is still uh, being seen on C-SPAN. Um, and the first question in front of me is to Justice Scalia. Why are you the way that you are? <laughs> You could hit a home run on that. <laughs> the devil makes me do it. <laughs> uh, Justice Ginsburg, the next question. 456 also sums out, too. President Trump is causing a big stir on social media. Yeah, a lot of people are trying to figure out what he meant when he tweeted this out early this morning or last night. Despite the constant negative press of Kofifi, he tweeted it just after midnight and didn't say anything else until this morning when he tweeted out who can figure out the true meaning of Kofifi? Enjoy. Donald Trump would tweet Confifi 456 days after Justice Clarence Thomas would ask a question. question. Justice Clarence Thomas, he has asked a question during oral arguments in a case. That doesn't sound funny. The man has not asked a question in 10 years. Well, the timing certainly is poignant because this is just the second week of arguments since his friend, Justice Antonin Scalia, died. And today, Justice Thomas finally spoke up and asked a question during our arguments. Uh, last week, in fact, marked the 10-year anniversary of him not speaking dur during oral arguments. So needless to say, it was a huge surprise to the reporters in the room there today. And this, of course, is interesting because while Thomas and Scalia, who sat next to each other on the bench, shared some conservative the same conservative views in many ways, uh, they had radically different styles during oral arguments. And so some court watchers believe that it's possible that uh, with Justice Scalia's voice now absent, Justin, Justice Thomas felt the need to sort of step in and fill that void. Justice Thomas would celebrate his 68th birthday, 132 days after the February 13th death of Justice Scalia, would ask his first question nine days after he would bury his friend, Justice Scalia. 17 days after his death, 17, the 17th letter of the English alphabet, and the mark of Q, Q, the 45th U.S. president. This is why, in the septenary cipher, a cipher that works off the number seven, you'll find the name of his Supreme Court justice pick, Amy Coney. 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 Sums out to 17 and would be the amount of months between the day that then-President Donald Trump would declare COVID-19 a 50-state national emergency and the day that Amy Coney would act alone in striking down the Indiana student lawsuit. 17 also sums out to evil Masons, the Jesuits, Napoleon, and to the 27 Club, President Biden. Hence, we are quite focused on communicating directly with those People, hence our special guest today, uh, about why it's important to get vaccinated, why these vaccines are safe, why uh, they can still kill you even if you are under the age of 27. We need to be clear and direct about our messaging. Joe Biden, who 27 days after Amy Coney Barrett's ruling would declare. With COVID cases surging and deaths now five times higher than just a month ago, President Biden is requiring tens of millions more Americans to get vaccinated. You've been patient. But our patience is wearing thin, and your refusal has cost all of us. This is not about freedom or personal choice. It's about protecting yourself and those around you. The president is ordering nearly all federal workers and employees of contractors that do business with the federal government get vaccinated within 75 days, eliminating their option to be tested instead of getting shots. Employees who refuse could be punished, even fired. If you want to work with the federal government and do business with us, get vaccinated. While initially reluctant to issue mandates, the president's aggressive new plan requires vaccinations for 17 million health care workers at hospitals and other sites that receive Medicare or Medicaid funding. President Biden is now pressuring private companies too, directing the Labor Department to require businesses with 100 or more employees ensure their workers are fully vaccinated 
or provide a negative test each week. Companies that do not comply could face fines. The White House anticipating lawsuits. We're going to protect vaccinated workers from unvaccinated co-workers. All of it as approval of the president's handling of the virus has dropped since he expressed confidence about the pandemic two months ago. Today, we're closer than ever to declaring our independence from a deadly virus. The president tonight. We're in the tough stretch and it could last for a while. And the TSA is doubling fines for airline passengers who refuse to mask up. If you break the rules, be prepared to pay. And by the way, show some respect. And Peter, the White House wants to make at-home testing more widely available. How do they plan to do it? Yeah, Lester, that's right. President Biden tonight announcing the federal government is teaming up with Walmart, Amazon, and Kroger to sell at-home rapid tests at a cheaper price beginning this week. And will the Biden administration's sweeping vaccine mandate become two months, 27 days after Donald Trump's 75th birthday, 72 days before his own 79th, on the 84-year-old 266th Jesuit Pope's 84th year, 266th day of life, two days before the September 11th attacks, 28th year anniversary, which would bring with it the promise of the end of the U.S. Afghani occupation. occupation. An operation that began on a day written out, 107, 7, and if you drop the zero, leaves you with 17, 17, 107, summing out to 200. 27, the Supreme Architect, the Georgia Guidestones, making America great again. Timing is everything. Everything is connected. The 9-11 terror attack, the order, the skull and bones, ritual sacrifice, directed energy weapons, the slaughter of the innocents, the Biden administration, and the 27 clubs fall of Afghanistan across multiple cyber, 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 cyber. 27 days after the 9-11 terror attacks, Operation Enduring Freedom, we take flight. Another defining day in the Bush administration. So we're going to go to our White House correspondent, Terry Moran. Terry, my recollection is I think yours that this day began, at least in public terms, with an offer by the Taliban to put Osama bin Laden on trial. It did indeed, Peter. This was one last ditch final effort by the Taliban to negotiate their way out of this. It's an offer the U.S. flatly rejected. 12.41 this afternoon, Press Secretary Ari Fleischer made a sudden appearance in the briefing room Gentlemen, announcing the airstrikes. We are beginning another front in our war against terrorism so freedom can prevail over fear. 20 minutes later, from the treaty room in the residence of the White House, the President spoke to the nation and the world. Good afternoon. On my orders, the United States military has begun strikes against Al-Qaeda terrorist training camps and military installations of the Taliban regime in Afghanistan. These carefully targeted actions are designed to disrupt the use of Afghanistan as a terrorist base of operations and to attack the military capability of the Taliban regime. We are joined in this operation by our staunch friend, Great Britain. Other close friends, including Canada, Australia, Germany, and France have pledged forces as the operation unfolds. More than 40 countries in the Middle East, Africa, Europe, and across Asia have granted air transit or landing rights. Many more have shared intelligence. We are supported by the collective will of the world. More than two weeks ago, I gave Taliban leaders a series of clear and specific demands. Close terrorist training camps, hand over leaders of the Al-Qaeda network, and return all foreign nationals, including American citizens, unjustly detained in your country. None of these demands were met. And now, the Taliban will pay a price. At the same time, the oppressed people of Afghanistan will know the generosity of America and our allies. As we strike military targets, we will also drop food, medicine, and supplies to the starving and suffering men and women and children of Afghanistan. The United States of America is a friend to the Afghan people, and we are the friends of almost a billion worldwide who practice the Islamic faith. The United States of America is an enemy of those who aid terrorists and of the barbaric criminals who profane a great religion by committing murder in its name. This military action is a part of our campaign against terrorism, another front in a war that has already been joined through diplomacy, intelligence, the freezing of financial assets, and the arrests of known terrorists 
by law enforcement agents in 38 countries. Given the nature and reach of our enemies, we will win this conflict by the patient accumulation of successes, by meeting a series of challenges with determination and will and purpose. Today we focus on Afghanistan, but the battle is broader. Every nation has a choice to make. In this conflict, there is no neutral ground. If any government sponsors the outlaws and killers of innocents, they have become outlaws and murderers themselves. And they will take that lonely path at their own peril. Now we're going to okay, go to Tony Blair now. President Bush, military action against targets inside Afghanistan has begun. We made it clear following the attacks upon the United States on September the 11th that we would take part in action once it was clear who was responsible. There is no doubt in my mind, nor in the mind of anyone who has been through all the available evidence, including intelligence material, that these attacks were carried out by the Al-Qaeda network masterminded by Osama bin Laden. Equally, it is clear that his network is harbored and supported by the Taliban regime inside Afghanistan. It is now almost a month since the atrocity occurred. It is more than two weeks since an ultimatum was delivered to the Taliban to yield up the terrorists or face the consequences. It is clear beyond doubt that they will not do this. They were given the choice of siding with justice or siding with terror, and they chose to side with terror. The United States and the world would fall on Afghanistan seven days. The magic seven. After the force of military bill would be quickly signed. signed. The bill, the authorization of use of military force that was passed on September 18th, 2001, when the United States did not even know who had attacked us. Uh, it is incredible, and, and I don't fault the legislature, the Congress, the House, and the Senate at the time. Americans were scared, and it was to extend the power of the, uh, the president. 555 days after the 9-11 attacks. If you're 555, then I'm... 555, some to president. The United States of America, match the value. If do what thou wilt, shall be the whole of the law. Words spoken by... And central to the religion of the Lima, 555 also sums out to mRNA, vaccines. Vaccine, vaccine, vaccine. Justice Thomas breaks 10-year oral agreement, silent streak. Justice Thomas, who shares a time span of nine days with Donald Trump, and who would break his silence nine days after he would bury his friend. The 27 Club, Justice Scalia, who would die 27 months, 17 days before Donald Trump's 72nd birthday. I was truly blessed to have had Nino at the court when I became a member in 1991. He was from the Northeast while I was from the Southeast. He came from a house of educators, and I from a household of almost no formal education. But we shared our Catholic faith and our Jesuit education, as well as our sense of vocation. Yesterday, I finished Eric McTaxis' biography of Dietrich Bonhoeffer. One of Hitler's last acts before the Allies defeated Germany was to have this man of God executed. I thought of this memorial, this memorial gathering here today, as I read Bishop Bell's eulogy of Bonhoeffer. With apologies, I borrow from it liberally and quote it loosely. Non potest non latari, we sparat in Domini. While in God confiding, I cannot but rejoice. God bless you, Brother Nina. God bless you. Nina, as was his nickname, which sums out to 156, asking the value of 666.
six 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 scapegoat gallbladder december 18th 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 and the time span in weeks between the birth of ruth bader ginsburg and her best buddy supreme court justice antonin scalia scalia who would die 55 months five days before her death on the jewish high holiday of Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah. for 137 days, 137, summing out to the day that was the death of Antonin Scalia. Scalia. It matches the value of Clarence Thomas, Hail Satan, Don Drumpf, the Pi Formula, Vaccination, Total Eclipse, Eclipse. Eclipse. and Joan, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who would die 137 days after she would receive treatment for a benign gallbladder condition at Walter Reed. We have breaking news to share with you right now. ABC News has just learned that Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg was hospitalized this afternoon for a benign gallbladder condition. She's expected to remain in the hospital for a day or two, but still plans to participate in oral arguments tomorrow over the phone. Ginsburg was last hospitalized in November for an infection and is, of course, a cancer survivor. But she's been continuing her famous workouts in the pandemic in a special fitness space set aside for her in the courthouse. 555 also sums out to the royal wedding of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Markle. Harry, will you take Meghan to be your wife? Will you love her, comfort her, honor and protect her? And forsaking all other, be faithful to her as long as you both shall live. I will. Megan, will you take Harry to be your husband? Will you love him, comfort him, honor and protect him? And forsaking all others, be faithful to him as long as you both shall live. The wedding of Prince Harry and Miss Meghan Markle, which also sums out to 6666, and would take place 666 days before RBG would celebrate her 87th and final birthday. 156 also sums out to the SARS-CoV-2 vaccine, and it's the reason why you'll find Prince Harry always making a passionate plea for increased vaccinations. vaccinations. Please welcome, live from California, Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex. As people sit in the room with you tonight, more than a third of the global population has received at least one dose of the vaccine. That's more than five billion shots given around the world so far. And it sounds like a major accomplishment, and in many ways it is. But there is a huge disparity between who can and cannot access the vaccine. Less than 2% of people in the developing world have received a single dose at this point. And many of the healthcare workers are still not vaccinated. We cannot move forward together unless we address this imbalance as one. At the same time, families around the world are being overwhelmed by mass scale misinformation across news media and social media, where those who peddle in lies and fear are creating vaccine hesitancy which in turn is dividing communities and eroding trust. This is a system we need to break if we are to overcome COVID-19 and the risk of new variants. 555 also sums out to the World Trade Center Twin Towers, the September 11th, 2001 attack, the Donald Trump Access Hollywood tape, which would be leaked to the media on a day written out 107, a day which if you drop the zero, leaves you with a seven, 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 seven. I don't need to wait. Hey, when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab them by the pussy. <laughs> I can do anything. The Washington Post would publish the leaked video 5,505 days after the 9 11 attack on October 7th, exactly 15 years or 180 months after Operation Enduring Freedom would take off. 180, which sums out to the Antichrist, Q Anonymous, the White Rabbit, President Trump, Genocide, Depopulation Agenda, 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 
you'll also find 180 in the time span in days that former president Donald J. Trump would set at the signing of his version of the COVID relief bill and the release of the government's UAP report release on June 25, 2021, exactly 180 weeks after the Stormy Daniel story would first be leaked to the media. 555 days after the 9-11 attacks, the United States attack on terror would set its sights on Iraq as George Bush 43 would give Operation Iraqi Freedom, which sums out to 666, matching the value of George Bush sacrifice. The go and war would descend upon Iraq. Iraq. Saddam Hussein was captured by American soldiers on December 13th, 2003, just over eight months after his regime was toppled by a US-led invasion. The former Iraqi president had stayed in Baghdad until the city was about to fall. He was eventually found hiding in what was described as a spider hole on a farm near his hometown of Tikrit. Saddam Hussein and his sons must leave Iraq within 48 hours. Their refusal to do so will result in military conflict commenced at a time of our choosing. Two days after this warning, U.S. President George W. Bush launched Operation Iraqi Freedom. Baghdad was soon taken. Within weeks, Saddam Hussein's statue was toppled. But that was the easy part. The coalition found a country divided by sectarian and ethnic rivalries. Nevertheless, the coalition decided to disband the Iraqi army, releasing tens of thousands of former soldiers who quickly became ripe for recruitment to the insurgency. Casualties among the coalition forces mounted, reaching 4,000 by 2008. But the Iraqis paid the highest price for the violence. Public squares became the backdrop for indiscriminate bombings, and thousands more were killed in coalition military operations. By April 2009, the Associated Press reported more than 110,000 Iraqi civilian lives were gone. Saddam Hussein was found in 2003, put on trial in 2005, and hanged in 2006. Despite going to war under the pretext of Hussein's alleged possession of nuclear, chemical, and biological weapons, none of these weapons were ever found. You talked about how you just sick you felt yeah. to your stomach when you found out there were no weapons of mass destruction. Can you bring me to that moment? Did someone walk in and say, we've stopped looking, they're not no, there? No, no. How did that happen? It just kind of was, a, it, it evolved. The fact that there wasn't weapons evolved. I mean, I was... You know, when we first got in there and started looking around and didn't find anything, that's, you get that kind of sinking feeling that, uh oh And then time went on. And then we got tips, you know, there, I'll never forget the tip that there was crates buried, you know, hidden in the Euphrates River. So they maybe these are them. Those weapons of mass destruction got to be somewhere. <laughs> As you can tell from the look on Andy Card's face, we've become a little concerned about the vice president lately. <laughs> Whenever you ask him a question, he replies, let's see what my little friend says. <laughs> but we get along well. Here I am saying, Dick, if the Hunan Palace doesn't get lunch here in four minutes, we're going out. Nope, no weapons over there. <laughs> Maybe under here. Oops, this photo wasn't supposed to be in here. This is a skull and bone secret signal. <laughs> Maybe these are them. And they've sent frogmen in there. There's nothing there. And so, uh, and then, of course, uh, George Tennant had the, you know, the inspectors go back in, or, or uh, David Kay and Dolfer, and, and um, that, that pretty well put the, was a period at the end of the sentence there. And uh, yeah, I felt terrible about it. And uh, uh, on the other hand, uh, those reports did point out that Saddam Hussein was very dangerous, that he had the capacity to make weapons, that, uh, and I'm convinced that if he were in power today, the world would be a lot worse off. 
One of the things I think that I thought about at the time, and I wonder if you did, and you talk a lot in the book about uh, Abu Ghraib and how outraged you were about that, about not finding WMD when you had a CIA director who had said slam dunk. No, no, he said I, slam dunk that the case, he didn't say slam dunk weapons. He, his, his point, just so you know, was that the case was a solid case. In other words, presenting the case would be a solid case to the people. A solid case that there were WMD. Right, but, but the evidence showed that he had WMD. I'm not, right. I'm, like, we're splitting hairs, right. but sorry. <laughs> well, I get my, but my question is, when you look at those things about Abu Ghraib, about the WMD, it seems as though no one ever paid for that. We went to war largely on that basis, and I know you argue that, you've, you know, that there is an argument that we're better off with, uh, right. without Saddam Hussein, who was a, a brutal dictator and a horrible man. But the fact of the matter is that we sent young men and women there who were killed, as I know you know better than anybody else, um, and no one ever, you never said, you're responsible for this, you're out. And so the American people, I think, began to kind of lose yeah. confidence in their government. I can see that. Uh, first of all, I was responsible. and. Uh, uh, the 2004 campaign was partially about that responsibility, but yeah, I mean, uh, the commander in chief responsible, and um, you know, we, I wish we'd have found weapons of mass destruction. However, that doesn't make the cause uh, a lost cause. Right, and something that it, you know, I mean, that's something you have argued. So I, I believe a free Iraq is going to be be transformative in the Middle East, and it's not going to happen under our lifetime. I mean, we're going to have to. You and I will be, well, I know I'll be long gone, uh, but I think somebody's... I'm sticking around. Yeah, I hope so. But I think somebody's going to look back someday and say, thank goodness the United States believed in the universality of freedom and liberated 25 million people and gave the Iraqis a chance to have their own free, uh, free society. Despite going to war under the pretext of Hussein's alleged possession of nuclear, chemical, and biological weapons, none of these weapons were ever found. In April 2004, photographs of prisoner abuse surfaced from the Abu Ghraib prison. 17 U.S. troops were removed from duty, and most were eventually tried in military courts. In 2008, Barack Obama won the White House, in part on a promise to end the war in Iraq. Two weeks later, the Iraqi parliament ratified a status of forces agreement with Washington. It set a timeline for U.S. troop withdrawal by the end of 2011. When the last American troops left, the U.S. had spent more than $1 trillion and lost more than 4,400 lives. Within two years, the insurgency linked to al-Qaeda in Iraq morphed into the Islamic State in Iraq and the Levant, or ISIL. It took territory in Iraq and Syria, often taking over American military equipment left behind as the Iraqi military was overtaken. By the summer of 2014, ISIL had taken the major Iraqi city of Mosul. The U.S. began airstrikes later that year. By June 2015, ISIL took Ramadi, and the Obama administration authorized up to 500 military trainers to Iraq. In the fall of 2016, U.S. trainers began to prepare Iraqi troops to retake Mosul, culminating in its liberation in March of 2017. The new U.S. President Donald Trump has publicly called for the total destruction of ISIL. Washington has launched a review of its counter-ISIL strategy, but there have been no announcements of how the new U.S. president will pursue his stated goal. Maybe the 45th U.S. president who would take office 127 years, 9 months, or 6,666 weeks after the birth of Hitler. 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 6,666, summing out to what would benefit the land of Israel, which is one word away from what can benefit the land of Israel, which sums out to 555, could use the help of the 46th U.S. president, who was born 127 weeks, three days after the death of Adolf Hitler. Hitler. Many Americans say to me that they believe there's a link between America's war in Iraq and the state of Israel, and that if America didn't have such a commitment to the state of Israel, there wouldn't be these problems in Iraq. What would you say to anyone who's expressed that thought to you? It's bizarre. Let me point out to you. I said when the, when the Baker Commission filed its report saying peace in Israel is related to Iraq, you may, I was the first and only person in the Congress to point out, if tomorrow peace broke out in between Israelis and Palestinians, does anybody think there wouldn't be a full-blown war in Iraq?
And conversely, if Iraq were transported to Mars, does anyone think there would not be the terrorism visited upon the Israelis every day? The difference between now and before 9-11, many Americans can taste what it must feel like for every Israeli mother and father when they send their kid out to school with their lunch to put them on a bus, on a bicycle, or to walk them. And they pray to God that cell phone doesn't ring. Every day, every day. And so let's get it straight. Israel is not the cause of Iraq. Iraq being settled or not settled has nothing to do with Israel's conduct. The second part is, people should understand by now, this should be crystal clear, that Israel, Israel is the single greatest strength America has in the Middle East. I always say to my friends when they say those things to you, I say, imagine our circumstance in the world. Were there no Israel? How many battleships would there be? How many troops would be stationed? So I, I find it uh, not only incorrect, but sometimes mildly insulting. I, you said I could ask you the hard question. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. In the American Jewish community, there is a certain sensitivity to the plight of Jonathan Pollard. You're running for president of the United States. It, if you win, it'll be a problem you'll have to face, too. Yes. May I ask Joe Biden, what's his sense on what should be done now with Jonathan Pollard? You know, I've been asked that question at the time Jonathan Pollard was arrested. Mm -hmm. One of the points that I think should be made is, if we don't want to play into the argument that Israel and Israelis and Americans who support Israel are have dual loyalties, then you can't deal with Pollard. Mm -hmm. He has to serve his sentence. He has to serve his sentence. Now, there's a rationale, in my view, why Pollard should be given leniency. A former U.S. military employee who was released after spending 30 years in jail for spying has arrived in Israel. Jonathan Pollard, who was convicted of selling secrets to Israel in the 1980s, was greeted by the Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu at the airport. He was caught passing on classified military information while working as a U.S. Navy intelligence analyst at the Pentagon. Last month, Pollard's five-year parole term ended paving the way for him to leave the U.S. There's a rationale for that. But there is not a rationale to say, no, what happened did not happen. It should be pardoned. And so I, I, I really do understand. But my, the greatest, I was raised by what you would call a righteous Christian. At my dinner table, my father would, uh, was, a, was a gentle man. He was a white-collar worker, high school educated, but a student of history and a devoted, <laughs> devoted supporter of Israel. My father always resented the fact that anyone, particularly if you were a Jew who supported Israel, from back in 48 when the debates were going on in the Jewish community here in the United mm -hmm. States, he could not understand how people could assume that because people understood that without an Israel, no Jew in the world was safe, he couldn't understand how that support could be translated into somehow being un-American. And my worry is that if we were to move, if I were president, to go and pardon Pollard, you didn't ask me that question, right. but to pardon Pollard would make a lie out of the notion that there are certain rules, period. You cannot give classified information, mm -hmm. period, even to a friend. If this were Great Britain, it would be the same thing. And so the standard has to be maintained. Okay. Okay. Have you ever been in a Seder? I have. I have. Give me one Seder memory. Well, my, I t tell you, my, um, my, my son married a young woman who is, who's mother and whole family is a very uh, prominent Jewish family in the state of Delaware, the Burgers. And my, my probably most poignant Seder memory is uh, not with the Burgers, but what happened uh, right after I came back from meeting Golda Meir. And I had predicted that there would be a, that, that something was going on in Egypt. And I remember the poignancy with which the we began the serve the actually the meal at that time. We began the meal with people talking about what it meant to them if Israel were actually actually defeated. And there is this inextricable tie between 
culture, religion, ethnicity that most people don't fully understand. That is unique and, um, how can I say, um, so uh, strong uh, with Jews worldwide. There is a, there is a, I mean, you know, I used to say, early on when I was a kid, I'd say, when I was a young senator, I'd say, if I were a Jew, I'd be a Zionist. I am a Zionist. You don't have to be a Jew to be a Zionist. The Iraq War would officially come to an end after the last troop would withdraw from Iraq on December 18th of 2011. 11, 11. This week, the president told Congress that he has the power to carry out these strikes uh, in part because of the Congress's 2002 authorization for the use of force in Iraq. But I have a letter here that Susan Rice sent to the, admin, uh, to the Congress back in July of this year, uh, just two months ago, in which she writes this. With American combat troops having their withdrawal from Iraq on December 18, 2011, the Iraq authorization for the use of military force <coughs> excuse me, is no longer used for any U.S. government activities, and the administration fully supports its repeal. How can you go to war based on an authorization that you say is no longer the basis for any U.S. government activities, and this authorization, you wanted it repealed? Chris, there are two authorizations in question. The first one is the 2001 authorization to use force. That was the one uh, that was voted by Congress in the wake of the 9-11 attacks. And it said this, we can use all necessary means to go after but those... But you also said okay. the Iraq let me, authorization. Yeah, let me just finish. Two things. There, you're right, but there are two things. One, 2001 authorization to use force. It said we can go after anyone who was associated with the forces that attacked us on 9-11. Zarqawi, the founder of al-Qaeda in Iraq, was a colleague of Osama bin Laden's before 9-11. Is it the basis or is it not the basis? It is a basis with 2001, but the 2002 authorization was focused on Saddam Hussein. But it also said that if uh, there are terrorist forces in Iraq that the Iraqi government is unable or unwilling to deal with, that gives us authorization to Don't act as well. It's kind of embarrassing that two months ago you wanted to repeal it? We still would like to repeal it. We think what would be very helpful is if, um, one, Congress uh, worked uh, to give us a targeted, focused uh, authorization. But while we welcome that, we don't need it. We have the 2001 authorization, and we have a basis in the 2002 authorization. Finally, President Obama spoke to the UN this week, but I want to ask you about his speech to the UN, same General Assembly, last year, in which he said that we are ending a decade of war. Take a look at this. Together, we've also worked to end a decade of war. Five years ago, Nearly 180,000 Americans were serving in harm's way. And the war in Iraq was the dominant issue in our relationship with the rest of the world. Today, all of our troops have left Iraq. Next year, an international coalition will end its war in Afghanistan, having achieved its mission of dismantling the core of al-Qaeda that attacked us on 9-11. For the United States, these new circumstances have also meant shifting away from a perpetual war footing. Beyond bringing our troops home, we have limited the use of drones so they target only those who pose a continuing imminent threat to the United States, where capture is not feasible, and there's a near certainty of no civilian casualties. The admission from the Pentagon that a drone strike in Kabul during those chaotic evacuations from Afghanistan hit civilians instead of ISIS-K members. It's been three weeks, but the Pentagon is now unequivocally apologizing for that missile strike in Kabul that left 10 dead, including children. Pentagon officials now calling a U.S. missile strike in Kabul a terrible mistake, concluding it left seven innocent children and three innocent adults dead identifying the driver of the car targeted as Zamari Amadi, an aid worker who worked for a U.S.-based group. Seen in this surveillance video, officials now acknowledge loading water canisters into the car, not explosives. It was a mistake, and I offer my sincere apology. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin offering his condolences to the family, writing, we know now that there was no connection between Mr. Amadi and ISIS Khorasan and that his activities on that day were completely harmless. It was just three days after a suicide bomber killed 13 American service members and some 170 Afghans at the Kabul airport. Fears and anxiety around the final withdrawal of U.S. troops sky high. And the Pentagon said it had dozens of intelligence reports indicating another imminent attack.
So U.S. drones tracking a white car for hours they thought had linked up with ISIS-K, watching the driver load the vehicle, launching that Hellfire missile. In the and there's a near certainty of no civilian casualties. We're transferring detainees to other countries and trying terrorists in courts of law while working diligently to close the prison at Guantanamo Bay. And just as we reviewed how we deploy our extraordinary military capabilities in a way that lives up to our ideals, we've begun to review the way that we gather intelligence so that we properly balance the legitimate security concerns of our citizens and allies with the privacy concerns that all people share. The Iraq war would officially come to an end on December 18th, 2011. December 18th, the day that would see the death of the 46th U.S. President's first family. I got elected on November the 3rd, and in November I was down hiring my staff on December 18th in Washington, D.C., and I got a phone call from a young woman who didn't know me, and that's why they had her call me, and she said in a monotone, Mr. Biden, your wife is dead. Your daughter is dead. I'm not sure your sons are going to make it. You should come home now. My family was Christmas shopping and a tractor trailer broadsided them. And all of a sudden, everything changed. December 18, 1972 would also, coincidentally, be the same day that... And on this day in 1972, President Nixon ordered the launch of Operation Linebacker 2, the most concentrated air offensive of the entire Vietnam War. The order came days after Vietnamese negotiators walked out of secret talks with the United States. President Nixon demanded they return to the table or else, as he put it. The attack over, the North, Vietnam, over North Vietnam lasted 11 days. American aircraft dropped 20,000 tons of bombs over densely populated areas. More than 1,300 civilians officially died. The Nixon administration saw the operation as a success because the North Vietnamese did eventually return to negotiations and, as, and the Paris Peace Accords were signed weeks later. But a wartime president followed through on his threat 37 years ago today. Interestingly, one of the first items on the agenda for the Biden administration would be to rejoin the Paris Climate Accords. 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 Tonight we are learning that Vice President or President-elect Joe Biden is expected to nominate longtime advisor Antony Blinken as Secretary of State. Blinken served as Deputy Secretary of State in the Obama administration. If confirmed, he is expected to focus on mending relations with our European allies and rejoining the Paris Climate Accord. Rejoining the Paris Accords is one step in President Joe Biden's strategy to fight global warming. Biden plans to spend $1.7 trillion on rapidly deploying clean energy technology around the country with an enforcement mechanism to reach first stage goals by 2025 and the final goal of zero emissions by 2050. And that's exactly what he would do on a day written out to two. Well, a 10-day string of palindromes, a date that reads the same forward as backward, began today. January 20th is the first time a palindrome has happened on an American presidential inauguration day. It is also a seven-digit palindrome, 1-20-2021. Palindromes for 2021 also include nine consecutive five-digit dates in December. That begins 12 one twenty one, so December first. This phenomenon will not occur again until the years twenty one eleven and twenty one twenty one. Moments after Joe Biden would. I, Joseph Robinette Biden Jr., do solemnly swear. I, Joseph Robinette Biden Jr., do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute. That I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. Office of President of the United States. And the first order I'm going to be signing here is relates to uh, um, COVID, and uh, it's requiring, as I said all along, um, where, where I have authority, mandating masks be worn, social distancing be kept on federal property, on interstate commerce, etc. So this is the first one I'm signing. And the second one I'm signing here is the uh, support for uh, underserved communities uh, and we're going to already we have uh, 
to make sure we have uh, some bedrock uh, equity equality as it relates to how we treat people and health care and other things. Uh, and you can leave, we'll give you copies of these executive orders. And a third thing I'm going to sign, and that's what we do while you're all here, is uh, the commitment I made that we're going to rejoin the Paris Climate Accord uh, as, of, uh, as of today. Mr. President. Mr. President. But those wouldn't be the only executive orders that the newly inaugurated 46th U.S. President would sign as his first executive actions in office. He would in fact sign 17, 17. which sums out to 44, 46, and the mark of Q. 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 Do you have any regrets about your presidency? When President Trump left the White House on January 20th, many QAnon believers were stunned. Nothing they'd been promised had come to pass. We were promised arrests, exposures, military regime, classified documents. Where is it? One online message read. Another wrote, I'm scared, feeling sick in my stomach, but I'm holding the line still. It was phenomenal to watch what was happening online. There was a complete meltdown of QAnon followers. There was this belief that while they weren't able to stop the election uh, from uh, being certified by the Congress, what was going to happen next was President Trump was going to declare martial law at the last minute, he was going to issue a national emergency broadcast alert, uh, that electricity was likely to go down, water was likely to go down, so everybody needed to stockpile uh, food and water and be able to survive in the winter for a couple of weeks. And then uh, President Trump would rightly uh, take his uh, place for his second term as president, um, and there would be no President Biden. I, Joseph Robinette Biden Jr., do solemnly swear. But as we've seen with many QAnon followers in the past, false predictions don't deter them. The conspiracy cult's beliefs simply evolve. Now, some QAnon adherents claim Trump is still secretly running the government. One 4chan user wrote, Anything that happens in four years is actually President Trump's doing. Others are suggesting President Biden might actually be working for Q. A lot of them will maintain that they've just misinterpreted the signals, that, you know, the real inauguration is going to happen in March instead of January, or that, you know, Joe Biden is actually one of the good guys. Like, did Trump use Biden to help take down the global cabal? They're already looking for all these symbols, like, on Joe Biden's first day in office, he signed 17 executive orders. 17 is the magic Q number. And so some of them interpreted that as a sign that he was secretly on their side. There's some people who actually believe Joe Biden is now part of the plan. He's actually yeah. working yeah. Yes. Uh, with Q. Yep. Yeah. And that, that was the plan all along. It's why you'll find December 18th would also be the day that my colleagues on both sides of the aisle we are here today to cross a very important threshold in american history on december 18th the house of representatives passed articles of impeachment of donald trump articles of impeachment for abuse of power and obstruction of congress as well as the day that Moderna would be granted emergency use authorization. Three, two, one, vaccinate! It's continuing to get worse and worse every day. It's a small step towards normalcy. 1,037 weeks after the September 11 terror attacks. 1,037 summing out to the Bush administration, Operation Iraqi Freedom, matching the value of the Biden administration sweeping vaccine mandates and the 116th United States Congress. 1,037 weeks after the 9-11 attacks, Joe Biden, the 46th U.S. president, would meet with the Prime Minister of Iraq. Iraq. Uh, moments ago, President Biden spoke with reporters during this meeting that he was having with the Prime Minister of Iraq. Yeah, among the questions, the surge in COVID amid the unvaccinated. See, this afternoon, President Biden announced the end of the United States combat mission in Iraq, with American troops now switching to a solely advisory and training role. The news came as the president welcomed there, as you can see in the Oval Office, Iraqi Prime Minister Mustafa al-Kadimi to the White House. Take a look. 
Iraq has been a vital part for, a partner for the United States for some time now in the Middle East, and we've been got engaged deeply in Iraq for my entire career back in the Senate as Vice President and uh, as President. And uh, I've worked with Iraq uh, to, uh, and a matter of fact, my son Bo was in Iraq for a year uh, with, the, with the Army National Guard. And uh, the U.S. Iraqi strategic dialogue is about commitments that expand our cooperation on issues like health care, climate, energy. For a matter of fact, I want to tell you, I was told you that half a million, uh, 500,000 doses of COVID vaccine were sending. I was told, you were told, they wouldn't come for a while. They'll be there in a couple weeks. Thank you. They'll be there quickly. Uh, and. Uh, we're also committed to our security cooperation. Our, uh, our shared fight against ISIS is critical for the stability of the region, and our counterterrorism cooperation uh, will continue even as we shift to this new phase we're going to be talking about. Well, our role in Iraq will be to be available to continue to train, to assist, to help, and to deal with ISIS as it, as it arrives. But, uh, we are not going to be by the end of the year in a combat mission. 207 days after the 46th U.S. President would take the oath of office. 207, the time span in days between the 45th and the 46th U.S. President's birthdays. 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 And while dropping the zero leaves you with the number 27, 27. 27. which sums out to Don and Joe, Yahweh, Needle Ritual, Paris, 11, Iraq. Where we go one, we go all, we go all, we go all. 27 also sums out to 46, matching the value of the 46th U.S. President, Joe, R. Biden, George Bush, Sacrifice, The Campfire, Ground Zero, Wizard of Oz, The End of Time, Afghanistan, Hidden Hand, The Pentagon, The Beast, King, Cyrus, Cyrus. Trump has the Cyrus anointing. God was raising him up like Cyrus. They're calling our president, Donald Trump, they're calling him Cyrus. Donald Trump is a Cyrus, gets it. President Trump will be like Cyrus. He used the Persian emperor, Cyrus, to issue a declaration by which the Jewish people returned to Zion and Jerusalem. He used the word of other Persian kings to bring about the restoration of Jerusalem, or allow for it. He used the word of the British Empire, the Balfour Declaration, to bring about the return of the Jewish people to the land of Israel. And the word of the, pres of the president of the world's strongest superpower in 1948, Harry Truman, to recognize the newborn nation of Israel against the advice of his State Department. Harry Truman, who claimed to have memorized the Bible by age 14, and had uh, himself joined a restorationist group called the American Christian Committee for Palestine. He locked himself in the, uh, in the White House for 48 hours, and on, at 6.11 p.m. on May 14th, uh, 1948, that's 11 minutes after Israel declared its independence, Harry Truman made the United States the first nation on earth to recognize the recreated Jewish state. And when asked later why he did this, why he went against the advice of all of his policy, foreign policy counselors, uh, Truman basically had a, a, a two-word response. He said, I'm Cyrus. He said, I'm Cyrus. Truman himself wrote after that, I am Cyrus. And now he is, God has used the word of another president. It's not about politics. It's about God. He's used the word of another president, Donald Trump, to recognize the resurrected city of Jerusalem against the warnings of the entire world. I said on Friday, you know, perhaps, you know, and you look at why Donald Trump was elected, you know, it takes somebody like him to do what he just did. But Trump has reassured the world that his word is worth more than any former U.S. presidents like Bill Clinton, George Bush, and Barack Obama, who all promised to move the embassy to Jerusalem but didn't deliver. Donald Trump recognized history. He, like King Cyrus before him, fulfilled the biblical prophecy 
of the gods worshipped by Jews, Christians, and yes, Muslims, that Jerusalem is the eternal capital of the Jewish state and that the Jewish people finally deserve a righteous, free, and sovereign Israel. And the, and the analogy on which the whole thing rests is shit. For one thing, Cyrus wasn't a fat, orange, conscious with scumbag. He just was <laughs> He just wasn't Jewish. But nothing in the Bible says he was the antithesis of what the Jews believed in, the way Trump is the antithesis of what Christians are supposed to believe. Cyrus wasn't a notorious sinner. He wasn't a pathological liar. He didn't call scribes the enemy of the people. <laughs> he never paid a concubine hush money. <laughs> And Cyrus wasn't the leader of the Jews. If Trump equals Cyrus, he would have to be a foreign leader who unwittingly helps America. We're the Jews in this analogy. <laughs> but they don't care. You see, that, that's religion for you. The more it doesn't make sense, the better. Because it proves your faith. So when the name Cyrus comes up amongst Christians, They all nod approvingly that they're, they're down with the code. This is the first time we meet in Washington, America's capital, after you declared, Mr. President, Jerusalem as Israel's capital. And this was a historic proclamation, followed by your bold decision to move the embassy by our upcoming uh, uh, National Independence Day. I want to tell you that the Jewish people have a long memory. So we remember the proclamation of the great king, Cyrus the Great, Persian king, 2,500 years ago. He proclaimed that the Jewish exiles in Babylon can come back and rebuild our temple in Jerusalem. We remember 100 years ago, Lord Balfour, who uh, issued the Balfour proclamation that recognized the rights of the Jewish people in our ancestral homeland. We remember 70 years ago, President Harry S. Truman, was the first leader to recognize the Jewish state. And we remember how a few weeks ago, President Donald J. Trump recognized Jerusalem as Israel's capital. Mr. President, this will be remembered by our people throughout the ages. And as you just said, others talked about it. You did it. They also get this, believe it's significant that the chapter in the Bible that mentions Cyrus is Isaiah 45, and Trump is the 45th president. 207 days after the 46th U.S. president would take the oath of office. 207, the time span between his and the 45th U.S. president's birthday. 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 207, summing up to the learned elders of Zion, Jewish, Masonic, Catholic ritual, the number of the beast, number nine, the Jewish Messiah, interdimensional, false Messiah, Donald Duck, Cyrus the Great, the Beast System, World War III, refugee crisis, alien invasion, Bin Laden, October 7th, New York City, New York, economic reset, terrorist attack, and the Palm Sunday bombings. bombings. On August 15th, 2021, the 227th day of the year, exactly 227 weeks before Egypt's Coptic churches would be rocked by the Palm Sunday bombings. Sunday bombings. The two attacks were apparently timed to cause maximum devastation. Both churches were packed with worshippers celebrating Palm Sunday Mass. The bomber at St. Mark's Cathedral in Alexandria was stopped by security. He detonated his bomb as he was going through a metal detector at the church's entrance. There is a reported claim by the group Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant for both attacks. President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi responded by announcing a security crackdown. We have issued a number of measures and we are also declaring a three-month state of emergency in Egypt after fulfilling the necessary legal and constitutional measures. Attacks targeting Egypt's Christian minority have increased over the last few months. In December, a suicide bombing also claimed by ISIL killed 29 worshippers at the main Christian cathedral in Cairo. Christians make up 10% of the population in Egypt. They say they feel increasingly threatened but will not be cowed. 
literacy in Egypt is a Christian numeric minority that has been on the receiving end of religiously motivated persecution and attacks. And so there has been an attempt after attempt of sowing these seeds, but it's not going to happen. Every time the Christians have reacted with, with a sense of forgiveness. Armed groups, some of whom are affiliated with ISIL, have been increasing attacks against security forces in the Sinai Peninsula since 2013. The government says the aim of the military operation there is to defeat armed groups that are trying to destabilize the country. But attacks like these show security is still a major challenge. My fellow Americans, this is a season of great hope. This week, Jewish families across our country and around the world celebrate Passover and retell the story of God's deliverance of the Jewish people. The story of the Exodus is a story of freedom. It is a story of an incredible people who were liberated from oppression and raised up the face of humankind. Down through the centuries, the Jewish people have lived through one persecution after another. And yet, they persevered and thrived and uplifted the world beyond measure. And now, the State of Israel stands as a monument to their faith and endurance. Another day of faith and celebration is also upon us. This Easter Sunday, Christians celebrate the resurrection of Christ and the promise of eternal salvation. It is a holy day of reverence and worship. It is a sacred time that fills the spirit of our nation with the faith of our people. America is a nation of believers. As families gather in houses of worship across the nation, we are grateful for the tremendous blessings of this land, our home. We have a beautiful country, an abundant countryside, and an amazing people with a truly bright and wonderful future. From the beginning, America has been a place that has cherished the freedom of worship. That is the promise the first settlers saw in our vast continent. And it is the promise that our bravest warriors have protected for all of our citizens in centuries since, a long time ago. Sadly, many around the globe do not enjoy this freedom. And one of the gravest threats to religious freedom remains the threat of terror. On Palm Sunday, as Christians around the world celebrate the beginning of Holy Week, ISIS murdered at least 45 people and injured over 100 others at two Christian churches in Egypt. We condemn this barbaric attack. We mourn for those who lost loved ones. And we pray for the strength and wisdom to achieve a better tomorrow. One where good people of all faiths, Christians and Muslims and Jewish and Hindu, can follow their hearts and worship according to their conscience. Egypt would go on to execute 17 people in connection with the bombings. Egypt now, and a military court has sentenced 17 people to death for their involvement in bomb attacks on churches in 2016 and 2017. 19 people have also been handed life in prison convictions. 15 others are to serve eight years in jail for the same charges. The churches that were hit are in Cairo, the Mediterranean city of Alexandria, and the Nile Delta city of Tanta. I saw militants claimed responsibility for the strikes. The offensive killed more than 80 people and wounded over 100. 227 weeks after the Palm Sunday bombings, on August 15, 2021, on the 227th day of the year, 227 summing out to 187, which sums out to 118 and matches the value of a decade of war, war and have big heart, while 227 also sums out to impossible coincidences, the number 13, sympathy for the devil, the Catholic Church, 8,000 points of light, Freemason, false flag, drone attack, the French Revolution, extraterrestrials, close encounter, the US military, weather balloon, a dystopian future, the conservative agenda, North American Union, secret government, mind control operation, cracked, the Jew code, Donald John Trump, equals six, 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 six. Grandmaster Trump, chosen anointed king, the Taliban, and the Star of David, the Jewish Defense League, Taliban War, Master Plan, the Israel, Fall of Afghanistan, Government, Theater, False Flag Attack, and Propaganda, and the worst is yet to come. 227 weeks after the Palm Sunday bombings on the 
27th day of the year, Afghanistan. We fall to the Taliban. Taliban. The fall of Afghanistan happened quicker than most U.S. officials anticipated and publicly stated. And that created an atmosphere of chaos and desperation in Kabul, captured by these incredible images from the week. U.S. forces have been sent back into Afghanistan to secure the airport and evacuate tens of thousands of people. But they will not be staying long. The United States' longest war ended in fear and chaos as the Taliban overtook Afghanistan's capital city, prompting an evacuation of personnel from the U.S. Embassy and dangerous last measures by Afghans desperate to leave the country. Despite those scenes, the President of the United States said he stood behind his decision to withdraw U.S. troops. The truth is, this did unfold more quickly than we had anticipated. So what's happened? Afghanistan political leaders gave up and fled the country. The Afghan military collapsed, sometime without trying to fight. If anything, the developments of the past week reinforced that ending U.S. military involvement in Afghanistan now was the right decision. American troops cannot and should not be fighting in a war and dying in a war that Afghan forces are not willing to fight for themselves. Republicans and some Democratic lawmakers swiftly condemned Biden for failing to anticipate the speed of the Afghan government's collapse and the potential damage to U.S. credibility worldwide. As the Taliban takes over governance of Afghanistan, analysts say the U.S. still has economic leverage in a country that is dependent on international assistance as well as traditional counterterrorism operations. Our options now include making sure the Taliban understand that if they get in cahoots with al-Qaeda or ISIS, or if they even indulge the worst of their own uh, misogynistic and sectarian behavior and uh, retaliate severely with violence against other Afghans, that we have options, we have military options to make them pay a price. And they will take that lonely path at their own peril. It, is it the basis or is it not the basis? It is a basis with 2001, but the 2002 authorization was focused on Saddam Hussein. But it also said that if uh, there are terrorist forces in Iraq that the Iraqi government is unable or unwilling to deal with, that gives us authorization to act as well. It's kind of embarrassing that two months ago you wanted to repeal it? We still would like to repeal it. We think what would be very helpful is if, um, one, Congress uh, worked uh, to give us a targeted, focused uh, authorization. But while we welcome that, we don't need it. We have the 2001 authorization, and we have a basis in the 2002 authorization. Finally, President Obama spoke to the UN this week, but I want to ask you about his speech to the UN, same General Assembly, last year, in which he said that we are ending a decade of war. Take a look at this. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken had no answer for why you were not able to understand that the Taliban were on the march, taking over that country, surrounding and cutting off Kabul, and it was about to fall. He was uh, had no answer to why he left all our military hardware on the battlefield, and now they got about $50 billion worth. And what about the fact that they are now asking for aid from us because they say we owe it because we allowed some of our people to get out? And they also said that the Taliban's calling on us, Americans, to have a big heart. Uh, Congressman, uh, Senator Tom Cotton sent out a tweet that got all of our attention. He was demanding to know where Anthony Blinken, the Secretary of State, was during this big May meeting, apparently this meeting where they uh, rehearsed the withdrawal plans for Afghanistan. And this was the tweet that Tom Cotton sent out. The Biden administration held an Afghanistan withdrawal rehearsal in May, but Tony Blinken did not attend. Where was Secretary Blinken during this exercise? He's now sent him a letter demanding answers on his whereabouts. What's your reaction to this? Well, he was probably at the Hamptons, just like he was on vacation when mm -hmm. Afghanistan fell. 668 days after the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation would hold event 201668, summing up to the fall of Afghanistan 2021, matching the value of the guiding spirit in the colonization scheme of America. Lord Francis Bacon, Bacon, Bacon. you know what they say, knowledge. Is power, power, power.
the 227th day of the year would also see the newly single Catholic feminist icon philanthropist Melinda Ann French Gates, who shares her birthday with the son of the French Revolution, Napoleon Bonaparte, celebrate her 57th year birthday. Two days after Justice Barrett's vaccine mandate, solo ruling, one day after a massive earthquake would strike the unluckiest island in the Caribbean, Haiti. Haiti. The Haiti. tragedy out of Haiti, a 7.2 magnitude yes. earthquake striking the island, leaving at least 227 dead. This coming just over a month after the president of Haiti was assassinated. Briefly, what should the U.S. be doing to maintain stability of this nation that is only 700 miles off the coast of Florida? Another tragedy for the people of Haiti. Uh, it's just one thing after the next. I've introduced legislation with, with Senator Rubio, bipartisan legislation, to make it clear that we'll come to the assistance of Haiti from the point of view of humanitarian help, but we also want to see a stable government and accountability for those who are violating the human rights of the people of Haiti. The massive 7.2 earthquake that would shake Haiti to its core, killing at least 200 27 people on its first day, one day before the 227th day of the year, the day that would see the fall of Afghanistan. 227, summing out to close encounter and massive earthquake, 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 earthquake. Kabul would fall seven weeks, two days, or 51 days after the U.S. government would release their preliminary assessment on unidentified aerial phenomena report to we the people 51 summing out to grandmaster hidden hand united states president 45 45 adolf hitler nazi germany the hamptons afghanistan satanic ritual destruction a decade of war you'll also find the time span of seven weeks two days or 51 days between the birthdays of the 44th U.S. President and the 45th, 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 45th. the United States would drop their much-awaited, unclassified, unidentified aerial phenomena preliminary assessment on June 25, 2021, 7,227 days after the September 11th terror attacks, or 7,000. 220 days of backwards 227 after the bill for military authorization would first be passed. 8,870 days after some strange lights would illuminate the nighttime Phoenix, Arizona skies. Sky, sky. Or 887 months, 19 days after the U.S. military would crash a weather balloon in the sands of the Roswell, New Mexico desert. Before you leave office, will you let us know if there's aliens? Because this is the only thing I really want to know. I, I want to know what's going on. Would you ever open up Roswell and let us know what's really going on there? So many people ask me that question. I know, yeah. it sounds almost ridiculous, no, but it's actually the real question I want to know. It sounds like a cute question, but it's actually, there are millions and millions of people that want to go there, that want to see it. I won't talk to you about what I know about it, but it's very interesting. But Roswell's a very interesting place with a lot of people that would like to know what's going on. So you're saying you may declassify? Oh. You'll, you'll, you'll take it? Well, I'll, I, I'll have to think about that one. Right? Right. 887, summing up to the gray race is here. It's here. It's here. Matching the value of stay at home. COVID is fake. The Ophiuca sign. NASA has changed the math behind the constellation. This is NASA, so this is real. And this people are freaking out, right? People are freaking because you feel like, oh, you associate with your sign. So you may not be the sign you think, all right? So they realize the ancient astrological calculations created over 3,000 years ago only used- Babylon. Only used 12 constellations. There are actually 13. Here's the other one, Ophiuchus. It's the 13th sign. So somebody has a new sign. It's not one of the 12 that you know. It's the form of a snake bear. It's been added. All right, so those people who are from the, what is it? Ophiuchus. They are, if you were born between November 29th and December 17th, you're now that. Okay, the traits of those people, they're seekers of knowledge. They tend to have a flamboyant style of dress and they consider to be great architects and builders. A87 also sums out to Luciferous race 
of Lucifer. Lucifer. In tonight's Factor Fiction, we are looking into an anti-vaccine meme going around social media. It says, are you going to get the so-called Luciferous with a patent number 060606 and a digital program called Inferno? These claims are fiction. Luciferous is a real scientific term that describes a group of enzymes that cause the emission of light, but no COVID vaccine contains or is called luciferous. It was only used in some COVID-related research. Supposing we hit the body with a tremendous, uh, whether it's ultraviolet or just very powerful light, and I think you said that hasn't been checked, but you're going to test it. And then I said, supposing you brought the light inside the body, you can, which you can do either through the skin or uh, in some other way. And I think you said you're going to test that too. Sounds interesting. Right, and then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in a minute, one minute. And is there a way we can do something like that uh, by injection inside or, or almost a cleaning? Because you see it gets on the lungs and it does a tremendous number of lungs. So it'd be interesting to check that so that you're going to have to use medical doctors with. But it sounds, it sounds interesting to me. As for the patent number claim, that refers to a patent Microsoft received for a cryptocurrency system using body activated data that contained a long string of numbers that did include 060606, but it has no link to vaccines. There is also no vaccine link to a program called Inferno. Interestingly, 227 also sums out to Lucifer, the light matching the value of thousand points of light the conservative agenda, one nation under God, a dystopian future, the great awakening, Don Trump and Bill Gates, mRNA vaccine, Holocaust, wicked act of mass murder, the Manhattan Project, and DNA sequencing. 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 The most urgent invention in the world right now is a vaccine that prevents you from getting COVID-19. What vaccines do is they teach your immune system about the pathogen. This is the coronavirus, and this shape on its outside is called the spike protein. It grabs on to the cells in your body that have a particular receptor and get that cell to make billions of copies of this virus. The first time that you're exposed to this virus, it takes literally days for your immune system to realize that it's a bad thing. So how do we get the immune system to go faster? Well, the idea of a vaccine is to give you an exposure to something that looks like this. So you're getting your body to make a lot of antibodies that can take these viruses and actually kill them. There's over a hundred different efforts making many different types of coronavirus vaccines. So how do you make a vaccine? Usually you're injecting at least part of the shape of the virus. Sometimes you do the whole virus but it's attenuated so it doesn't multiply too much. Sometimes you take the virus and you kill it. You won't get sick because they're not duplicating. What's typically done is you just take either a piece of the virus or just the spike, that thing on the surface, and you put it on something else. So there's no risk at all of causing the disease. Two of the available COVID vaccines use mRNA technology. The inventor of this technology is now raising questions about the safety of these vaccines, and he's already being censored for it. NTD's Miguel Moreno has that story. The FDA allowed pharmaceutical companies to cut corners when they gave the COVID vaccines a pass for emergency use. They're still being tested. I mean, you can do the math. Uh, we haven't had two years of safety data after 3,000 subjects have been uh, voluntarily administered the vaccine. Dr. Robert Malone invented mRNA technology. He says researchers have discovered that the CCP virus's spike protein is cytotoxic, meaning it damages cells and can also open blood-brain barriers. All emergency use vaccines in the U.S. use this spike. Dr. Malone tells The Nation Speaks that he believes ethical and legal lines have been crossed in how these experimental vaccines are being advertised or mandated. Everyone that accepts the product has to do so fully voluntarily. They cannot be coerced in any way. That includes 
pressure through social media, through uh, public uh, statements from uh, political leaders. There has to be voluntary non-coerced -co consent to, to take the product for the good of humanity. At the moment, a nurse is suing the Texas Methodist Hospital for this reason. She's been fired along with others for refusing to get vaccinated against COVID. Miguel Moreno, NTD News. One final way that's new and is promising is called the RNA vaccine. With RNA and DNA, instead of putting that shape in, you put instructions in the code to make that shape. So the Gates Foundation, along with a great number of partners, are looking at these different efforts. We've never created a new vaccine in less than five years. So this is urgent and it's gonna require incredible collaboration. It's gonna to have to go to 7 billion people. So I am optimistic that one of the vaccine efforts will give us vaccines in the next 18 months. And we'll make sure that it's produced in volume and that it's accessible to everyone in the world. That's how we're gonna end this pandemic. 700 miles off the island that would be rocked by a 7.2 earthquake the major breaking news out of Haiti that we are continuing to follow. NBC News has now confirmed at least 227 people are dead following this morning's 7.2 magnitude earthquake. 147 days after a judge who was born in 72 and who shares a time span of 227 days with the September 11th attacks, which would take place 7,227 days before. Just into our newsroom, this security camera video. Now, remember, this is from an adjacent condominium. Stunning. It captured the moment of the collapse, a 12-story complex simply turning to rubble. It almost looks as if it was an intended implosion. It's chilling to watch, almost like watching the September 11th attacks. This surveillance footage capturing the moment the building crumbled. You can see one section pancaked, then another. 55 of the building's 136 units gone in a matter of seconds. And it just looks like, it, it, it almost looks like I said, like 9-11, like if a bomb hit or something, and it just completely wiped it out. There's a pile of rubble. Officials are calling the disaster one of the deadliest structural building failures in U.S. history. And in the 33 days since, first responders from across Miami-Dade, the state, the country, and the world have worked tirelessly to recover victims from the collapse and to bring closure to the families and the loved ones of those we lost. Today, I can report that because of these sustained heroic efforts, the last remaining missing person has now been accounted for and identified and the family notified. 98 victims have now been identified, including 97 victims who were recovered from the collapse and one person who passed away in the hospital. 98 families have been notified. All 97 people for whom we had missing persons reports have been recovered. And a total of 242 people are accounted for. Although we have identified all of the victims that were reported missing, the Miami-Dade Police Department continues the ongoing search and recovery effort on the evidentiary pile to ensure that all identifiable human remains are recovered. Nothing we can say or do will bring back these 98 angels. 147 days after Supreme Court Justice Amy Coney Barrett, who sums out to 147, would celebrate her 49th year birthday, 98 angels would lose their life. And while 147, also sums out to we will never forget 9, 9 11, 11, 11, 11. The Donald John Trump COVID-19 vaccine handheld directed energy weapons, as well as Donald John Trump make America great again. The 13th of March, extraterrestrials, the Star Wars program, the FBI, the Francis Bacon, King James Version, second coming of Christ, and FEMA, 98, sums out to the Surfside condominium collapse, 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 collapse. matching the value 
of 227, 322, Donald John Trump, The Wizard of Oz, The Francis Bacon, King James Version, The Devil is in the Detail, Donald Trump, Septentry Cipher, 26 Letter Alphabet, The 45th Day of the Year, Valentine's Day, The Day That the Home of the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas Eagles would see the death of 17 students, 98 also sums out to White Rabbit, Donald John Trump, Unidentified Aerial Phenomena, the United States Report, dropping one day after the Surfside Condominium Collapse, collapse, collapse. Black Pope, Jorge Mario, Virgoglio, Joint Terrorism Task Force, Pope Francis is the last Pope, 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 Pope. You can't always get what you want. The Brotherhood of Saturn, Love Under Law, Love Under Will. Now therefore, I, Donald J. Trump, the State of the Union Address, the U.S. Declaration of Independence, the Dark Side of the Force, Bluebeam and Jorge Mario Bergoglio, President Barack Hussein Obama, Blue Light over New York City, City, City. which would engulf the Big Apple, 911 days before the Surfside condominium collapse. 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 Few things bring New York City to a standstill. Tonight, a bright blue light lit up the sky for miles from Queens to New Jersey. Look at that. Our police in New York have sought to reassure residents after a bright blue light illuminated the night sky over the city. Alien, the almighty, or apocalyptic? New Yorkers were asking the question when the night sky turned blue on Friday. It was freaky. It was like Independence Day uh, in the movie where you just look up and uh, a weird blue color that uh, you, know, you haven't seen lighting up the clouds in the sky. It looked like something was above the clouds. The night looked like the day because the lights, everything is different, you know? I saw just the yellow sparks in the sky. It looked like blue fire. It was insane. It was a really weird blue color too. I was like, eh, aliens are here. <laughs> well, maybe not. <laughs> It stunned residents. On social media, one person spoke of a vibrating noise. Another said she was shocked to the core, and some suggested the presence of Ghostbusters or extraterrestrial beings. The answer was far more down to earth. A hot electrical fire in the city's largest borough of Queens, in fact, caused the cool blue shade that cut through the sky and disrupted some residents' plans. A surge at a local electric power plant set off the small fire and the blue sparks. It could have been that since it was an electrical fire that it caused an arcing, a, a, a splash of power, so to speak. And that might have been what caused that, that uh, light, la large light. There were local outages, some city trains were stalled, and flights at one of New York's major airports, LaGuardia, were stopped for about half an hour. But there were no injuries and the city police department was intent on allaying any further fears, saying that the incident was the result of a transformer explosion and there was no evidence of extraterrestrial activity. They'll hope that that'll be enough to put all suspicions to rest. So it's not the aliens? Uh, apparently not. Okay. Not this time. First stop, a mysterious blue light hovering over New York City causes panic, confusion, and wild conspiracy theories. Some people joking it could be aliens and end up like this. Turns out it was an explosion at a power plant. Fortunately, no one was injured by the blast. All right, so did anyone else see this in panic? Because I thought it was War of the Worlds. So Question whether it happened. Business Network. You, you guys, you're on, you're on air. You're working. <laughs> Thank you for that, by the way. I was sleeping. <laughs> Okay, so I saw it. Nice enough for you guys to choose this topic. Nobody saw it, but but it really looked like, if you know the end of the world movies, it mm -hmm. looked like that. It looked like it was this this bluish green sudden explosion. So, so do we believe what was the story? Do we believe right? The story? Do you believe it's that's my thing? Do right? you believe I don't that believe it, it wasn't aliens? I don't believe it. You know what I believe? They're killing Smurfs. That's what it is. They're burning up Smurfs over there. Okay. Hmm. It's a little, Smurfatorium. Little, it's a Smurfatorium. I have, I have no, you know little, what? You know what's great today. is that everybody thought that it was, everybody was joking about it. So when the real apocalypse comes, everybody's going to be on Twitter joking about the apocalypse and, and they're going to die. Be, uh, it's going to be That's walking be it. dead. <laughs> yes. Yeah. What do you think? This is how they soften us up. Yes. This is how we know the aliens are coming because they, they just ease in a few stories <laughs> like this. And then there was a retired Air Force guy who says, no, this was all real and begs for declassification of documents. And uh, the, the movies become more and more realistic. And then all of a sudden, it's Mars attacks. Ah, ah. The blue lights 
that would transform the New York City skies 911 days before the Surfside condominium collapse would ignite exactly two years or 731 days after Donald Trump would sign the COVID relief bill. bill. With breaking news. Breaking news now at 8. President Donald Trump has signed a $2.3 trillion COVID-19 relief and government spending bill. The move sends more critical government aid to families and also avoids a government shutdown. All right, buckle up. Thousands of reported UFO sightings have been declassified by the federal government this week. That's ahead of a deadline set by, oddly enough, the coronavirus relief bill. The Kron Farzella Sogamonian is here live. This is, I think, one of the more interesting stories of the night, so tell us more. We certainly needed something to lighten up a bit. Hopefully it's not really scary news for people out there, but it's hard to understand why it was in the COVID-19 relief bill, but one yeah. thing is really clear, lawmakers want to know more. So this mysterious blue light was captured over the skies of Hawaii just this week. Something is in the sky. This video was taken by Misitina Sape at 826 Tuesday night near Haleakala Avenue in Nanakuli. Not long after, a woman named Mariah spotted the same thing passing over Princess Kahanu Estates. I don't know what you're talking about. And then I was like, oh, I started calling my husband because it was all in the garage. I was like, hey, come on, come down. This is what I think. The 38-year-old says she's never really been a believer in UFOs, but the bright blue objects had them so intrigued, they jumped in the car and started following it. I don't know what it was. This one's going so fast. The journey ended less than three miles from where it began, on Farrington Highway in front of the Board of Water Supply building, after the object appeared to drop into the ocean. On a f***ing line in the water, whatever it is. She described it as being larger than a telephone pole and says she never heard it make any sound. We called 911 if I have like one cop or somebody should come out and um, come check them out. While officers were on scene, she says they spotted a second light. My husband would look up and he seen the white one coming. The white one was smaller, was coming in the same direction as the blue one. They lost sight of the object after it passed over a nearby mountain. This morning, we asked Honolulu police if investigators figured out what fell in the water. A spokesperson told us they didn't have any information. Meanwhile, officials from the FAA said they received a report from police Tuesday night about a possible plane down in the area, but had no aircraft disappear off radars and no reports of overdue or missing aircraft. Although Mariah's had a couple days to think about it, she says she's still baffled by what she saw. It's these kind of events that have inspired the order for more information on UFOs that was tacked on to that COVID-19 relief bill. We want to know who, who are they, you know, why are they here, what are their intentions, and how long have they been here? The clock is ticking for the Pentagon's discreet program to investigate UFOs as ordered by a clause in the coronavirus relief bill. The UAP task force, which stands for Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon, now has less than 180 days to submit a detailed overview of the UFO mystery to Congress. So far this week, nearly 3,000 documents have been declassified and can be found on the Black Vault website. The Surfside condominium collapse would take place 887 months, 17 days after the Roswell incident. And in the case sensitive, Francis Bacon ciphers you'll find A87 sums out to my fellow Americans. The storm, the storm, the storm, the storm. It's upon us. It matches the value of the Galactic Federation of Light. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Ancient and accepted Scottish Rite Freemasonry. Jews are behind global warming. All I'm doing is telling the truth. May 23rd, 2017. A day that would fall. 100. 37 weeks, 3 days before the fall of Kabul. And what 137 sums out to Jabulun, the Pope, shot Antonin, the War of the Worlds, Paradise, California, dystopian collapse, the Space Force, reptile, the Lemic, satanic cult, the White House, Regeneron, Bin Laden, scapegoat, and the fall of Kabul, of Kabul, Kabul. the capital of Afghanistan, which sits on the 33rd, 33rd parallel, 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 which also sums out to 98 
matching the value of the fall of Kabul, Afghanistan, 2021. And in the case sensitive Francis Bacon ciphers, you'll find it also sums out to 87. Seven. Seven. The strange blue lights would illuminate the East Coast skies. 201 months, 17 days after the United States would hold a day of festivities on the six month anniversary of the 9 11 attacks. 201, summing out to QAnon. 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 Matching the value of the beast from the East. Extraterrestrial North American Republic, King of the Saturnalia, Leader of the Free World, Declassified Documents, The Star Wars Project, Direct Energy Weapon, Joe Biden, SARS, Cove 2 Jab, and Donald Trump, Sacrifice across multiple ciphers. 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 Among the March 11 festivities, Bush 43 would unveil the heroes of 2001, semi postal stamp. stamp. This afternoon at the White House, President Bush hosted a ceremony where a new postage stamp was unveiled commemorating the events of September 11th. Cameras were allowed to cover the Oval Office event for a few minutes. Uh, welcome. We're about to unveil a stamp. Um, extraordinary piece of work. I want to thank Charlie Grill and thank Gary Asman for sponsoring it. This stamp will sell for... 45 cents, 11 cents obviously more than the current price of a stamp, 8 cents will go to a victim's fund to help those uh, family members who are struggling in the aftermath of 9-11. It is uh, it's a good gesture by the Postal Service. I here and I want to thank you for that very much. Three officers here, and they are uh, they're on the stand. I appreciate you all uh, allowing your allowing the postal service to use you. It's a way to help our nation remember the terrible incident that took place six months ago, and help people get their lives back in order. And so it's with pleasure that uh, we're stand. Good job. All right, thank really you good all. job. Thank you all. But these wouldn't be the only festivities lined up for the day. Mayor Michael Bloomberg would go on to dedicate a 45,000 pound sculpture. And still this would not be the main event. Time for you to get involved. Do you feel safer today than you did before September 11th? To take the quick vote, head to CNN.com. The AOL keyword is CNN. A reminder, this poll is not scientific. Earlier in New York's Battery Park, officials dedicated a 45,000 pound steel and bronze sculpture as a temporary memorial to the victims of the attack. The sphere, as it's called, stood in the World Trade Center Plaza and was partially crushed by falling debris. Good evening. As we all know, six months ago, a gaping hole was torn in this city's skyline. And worse, much worse, thousands of families were torn apart forever. Tonight, from World, the World Trade Center, one stood down there, the lower end of Manhattan. Beams of light now soar into space, high enough to be seen from 20 miles away. It is called the Tribute of Light. All day, people have been looking back at how the world has changed in the six months between September 11th and March 11th. In the past two weeks, the number of cases of COVID-19 outside China has increased 13-fold. We have therefore made the assessment that COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. Interestingly, the West Coast skies would turn orange exactly 89 weeks before they would transform alien blue in the East. East, East. Exactly one year before Joe Biden's sweeping vaccine mandates what is happening out there? Dark orange sky all around the Bay Area. A frightening reminder of all the fires burning around us. I just felt like something's wrong. It's just so strange. I don't understand what's going on. I'm wondering what world I'm in right now. I mean, it seriously looks like it's about 4 a.m. right now. Number of photographs that have been sent by family, friends uh, this morning uh, overwhelmed my inbox. There is uh, obvious concern around air quality. 
And we've had photos coming in from all over showing the sky that has not changed much since this morning. Good afternoon, I think, or good night, or who knows anymore. I'm Larry Beal. <laughs> it is hard to tell. I'm Kristen Z. Let's take a look at these images from the North Bay to wow. the East Bay to the peninsula. Wow is right. It's about all anyone can talk about today. The orange haze looks like Mars. Unreal. Apocalypse. So many terms for what we're seeing. It's still almost dark out in some areas. This is a live look right now from our rooftop tower camera. And while 89, the mere number of 98, and the time span between Donald Trump's 55th birthday and the September 11th attacks, sums out to extraterrestrial human, New World Order President, U.S. President, Donald J. Trump, 9-11, 2001, 222, 147. Welcome to the revolution, the United States of America, COVID-19, vaccinations, vaccinations. stab its own economy to death, the Pizzagate, conspiracy theory, the Skull and Bone Society, 15th of August. The calm before the storm and the end of the world. 27, the number you can find in the days between the September 11th attacks and the day the United States would descend upon Afghanistan. You'll also find 27 if you drop the zero in the time span between September 11, 2001 and June 7, 2002. A day that sums out to 27, matching the value of 100 to one odds global tax, a COVID jab, the cabal, Jesus, Lamb of God, dollar bill, Baphomet, blue pill, Donald John, Queens, New World Pentagon, don't panic, Phoenix, Arizona, Black Cube, Francis, Zionist World War, Sandy Hook, Columbine, Fox News, Tony Blair, Puppet, Virus, Pakistan Knockout, and Fires, June 7, 2002, would be the day that the United States would issue their heroes of 2001 semi-postal stamp. Two months, 27 days, or 89 days, after it would first be unveiled on March 11, 11, 11. You'll also find 27 in the time span between Pope Francis's 84th birthday and the Surfside condominium collapse, as well as the day that Afghanistan would officially collapse. And 9-11. 20, 21, 21, the 20 year anniversary of the September 11th attacks. A day that would land 98 days before Pope Francis would celebrate his 85th birthday. 98, also summing out to Donald Trump, 9, 11, 2021. Boxing commentary. 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 <laughs> And we welcome you to the alternate broadcast. How can it be the alternate? It's got to be the main broadcast. We have the 45th president of the United States, Donald Trump, here. You heard it, 100 to 1 odds that David Hay gets knocked out in the first round. Would you put money on that? Well, that's pretty tough odds, I think. You know, David was a great fighter. He hasn't fought for a while. And, but usually a great fighter, you're born with that. But uh, 100 to 1 odds sounds pretty good to me. <laughs> On camera, as you can tell, obviously the 45th president of the United States, his son Don Jr. and AC. We thank you for joining us here tonight on Triller Fight Club. When was the last time you were in the building for a fight card? Do you remember? Well, I've been in a lot of buildings for a lot of fight cards. <laughs> I had a lot of Mike Tyson fights, I think more than anybody. I think I had 17. We had uh, Sphinx Tyson. That was 92 seconds. Oh, yeah. That was not yeah. good. Yeah. That was a quickie, and people hadn't even arrived yet. Yeah, this is boxing. You never know who's going to well, win until it's official. It's like elections. It could be rigged. I've seen, <laughs> I've seen some of them, too. Fair enough. I knew we'd get some good commentary tonight, so... Uh... Holyfield would go on to lose in the first round, which sums out to 6-6-6-6. Six, 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 six. Matching the value of Donald J. Trump is the devil. The September 11th terror attacks, the World Zionist Organization, Operation Iraqi Freedom, a withdrawal rehearsal, the heroes of 2001 semi-postal stamp, and the address of the Surfside condominium collapse. 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 And while the fall of Afghanistan would take place 27 days after the fall of Hollyfield, it would also take place seven weeks, three days after the Surfside condominium collapse. collapse. And it's in the numbers. It's always in the numbers. It's the reason why you'll find 
September 11, 11, 11. A day written out 9, 11, or 11, 0, 9, 9, 9, 9. And all 9, 11 sums out to 9, 11 was a signal matching the value of Satan. Communication different 9, 11s, 9, 11, 21. Masonic Hunting Club Ritual Human Sacrifice Donald Trump Sacrifice Sacrifice For Saturn Killed by the Numbers Coronavirus Disease 2019 266 Joe Biden Trump Puppet Collusion With Russia Institutional Racism The US War In Afghanistan A Confirmed Conspiracy The Taliban War Master Plan The Taliban War Is A Hoax The Biblical End Of Days Cracked the Jew code, your reality isn't real. Am I living in the matrix? Matrix. As well as 26 letter alphabet, Freemasons run the country. 19 al-Qaeda terrorists and the September 11th attacks. Among the attacks that cemented al-Qaeda as America's deadliest terrorist foe, was the suicide bombing of the USS Cole destroyer in Yemen. The attack on the USS Cole was a suicide bombing, and it came at a time when terrorism wasn't something a lot of Americans even thought about. The attack came 11 months before 9-11. On October 12, 2000, 17 American sailors were killed. Again, this was the deadliest Al-Qaeda attack on U.S. interests until September 11, 2001. The attack that changed America forever. 19 Al-Qaeda terrorists hijacked four planes, crashing two of them into the World Trade Center, one into the Pentagon and another into a Pennsylvania field, killing nearly 3,000 people. Al-Qaeda was blamed just days after the attack. Osama bin Laden became the world's most wanted man, and the U.S. launched the war on terror, starting with the invasion of Afghanistan. 1109 also sums out to Rudy Giuliani. 9 11, 11, 11, 11. So people should remain calm. They should remain where they are, except if they are in southern Manhattan. If you're below Canal Street, you should walk out of southern Manhattan and walk north, as these people are doing right here. All right, that's cool. Do you know right. that ain't cool? Do you know anything about anything? Yes. Yes. All, that we yes. know, all that we know right yes. now is that two airplanes struck the two large towers of the World Trade Center. We spoke to the White House. There also apparently was an attack on the Pentagon. We asked that the airspace around the city of New York be sealed by military aircraft. We've been informed that it has been, and we've seen military aircraft up in the air. Uh, so we're, we're hopeful that right now things are secure. And we need all of the open space we can get to evacuate people, to get people out. And we're going to have to move now and go north. So I need all media to cooperate and make this go. Rudy Giuliani does an annual dinner. Uh, every year with people who were involved with him on September 11, 2001. And, and for years, I, you know, I, I, my impression was it was a somber, poignant gathering of people to talk about what was lost and how the city saw itself through that time. Not really anymore. I don't want to sound like a name dropper, but I told this to the Queen of England. She said, you did, you did a wonderful job <laughs> on September 11. And therefore, I'm making you an honorary knight, commander of the royal something or other. <laughs> I turned down a knighthood because if you took a knighthood, you had to lose your citizenship. I know Prince Andrew is very uh, questionable now. I never went out with him. Ever. Never. Never had a drink with him. Never was with a woman or a young girl with him. Ever, ever, ever. One time... I met him in my office, and one time when we had the party, right, Bernie? You were there. Can you imagine I had Tony Blinken or Miley? How did, how's that guy a general? Jesus. The other day, he said that the Bagram Air Force Base is not strategically important. I wanted to grab his, what do you have, five stars, ten stars, twelve stars? He has so many stars that are coming up into his ears. I wanted to grab his stars, shove it down his throat, and say, it's 400 miles from China, asshole! China is going to be our enemy for the next 40 years. You have an air base 400 miles from them, and you're giving it up, idiot! What the hell is wrong with you? Who pays you? Christ! That is crazy! I don't know. I shouldn't get into this. What Biden did in the last two weeks is freaking insane. 
It cannot be explained. Well, 20 years ago, I did my job for the country. I'm very proud of it. But I did it because of them. 1109 also sums out to Prince Harry, Duke of Sussex, number of a woman, 6666. Melinda Ann, French Gates, the COVID-19 vaccine event code, the first COVID-19 vaccine being announced on the day written out 1109, exactly 1,000 weeks or 7,000 days after the 9-11 attacks. Pharmaceutical giant Pfizer, I don't even know her, reportedly making an enormous breakthrough with its COVID-19 vaccine, announcing today it appears to be 90% effective based on early testing. That news gave the stock market a shot in the arm. 1109 also sums out to the third temple of Jerusalem, the COVID-19 vaccine end of days Illuminati signal number and the state of Israel COVID-19 shot shot a look at Israel could perhaps be a better case study of what to expect once that happens Israel has been a world leader in COVID-19 vaccination efforts but owing to a surge in COVID-19 cases attributed to the highly transmissible Delta variant the country is now focusing on booster shots to protect the vulnerable. Raquel Mugai reports on what has now become the largest real-world observational study so far to compare natural and vaccine-induced immunity to COVID-19. As daily infections rise in Israel, with 10,000 cases being reported on average daily, the government is preparing to administer fourth coronavirus vaccinations. Since August 1st, Israel has been offering booster shots of Pfizer vaccine, which a majority of the population was vaccinated with. So far, 2.6 million people out of a population of 9.3 million have received three doses of the vaccine. Israel is expected to present data from the rollout of COVID-19 vaccine booster shots to the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, which is weighing White House plans to begin a booster drive in the United States. Countries like Spain, Germany and Turkey have already announced booster shots for their vulnerable groups, even as the World Health Organization calls for a moratorium on booster shots until at least the end of September to leave more doses available for people in countries with poor access to vaccines. Starting Sunday, October 17, any office, business, or venue that requires green passes for entry must scan the pass itself before granting it. Each green pass has a QR code that will be read by a health ministry app and compared against the holder's ID. The new multiple authentication process meant to make it more difficult to fake the passes. And the new scanning regulation now set to be enforced following weeks of bugs in the network and process. All Israelis with a third COVID booster shot who are within six months of their second shot or who are both recovered and vaxxed at least once are eligible for the pass. Everyone else will be granted a 72-hour pass after each negative COVID test, and they'll have to pay for it out of pocket unless the person is also ineligible for vaccination, such as those with compromised immune systems. Meantime, in addition to making it harder to defraud the system, the updated restrictions also meant to push unvaccinated Israelis towards getting their shot. 1109 also sends out to the Taliban 1077. The Taliban Masonic Code. code. The Taliban Jesuit orders. 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 August 15th, the day of Afghanistan's fall, would also be the Jesuit Order's 487th year birthday. And if you look a little closely, you'll find the number 1109 hiding in plain sight in the darndest places. Meanwhile, you'll find 487 sums out to the order turns 487 seven, seven. And matches the value of the high priest over the house of Yahweh, Pope Francis Jorge Mario Bergoglio, Bergoglio. The Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant Liberty, enlightening the world. 
the collapse of the World Trade Center. September 11th, the day that changed America forever, forever, forever. The complete collapse of the United States of America, America, America. The COVID-19 vaccine, 9-11 trilogy finale. The first vaccine dropping exactly 40 weeks before the drop of Afghanistan. Afghanistan. Justice, Amy Coney Barrett's Jesuit orders. Amy Vivian, Coney Barrett's New World Order agenda. January 28th, 2018, Amy Coney Barrett's 46th birthday. birthday. This is Ridiculous and from the Twilight Zone, the New World Order pledged to the Jews. New York Times, October the 6th, 1940, page 10, and the article is called, New World Order, Pledge to Jews. Give a look at the article. Arthur Greenwood, member without portfolio in the British War Cabinet, assured the Jews of the United States that when victory was achieved, an effort would be made to found a new world order based on the ideals of justice and peace. Arthur Greenwood, who was a deputy leader of the British Labour Party. New World Order Forecast When we have achieved victory, as we assuredly shall, the nations will have the opportunity of establishing a new world order. This is where you'll find Harry Truman, who claimed to have memorized the Bible by age 14 and had uh, himself joined a restorationist group called the American Christian Committee for Palestine. He locked himself in the, uh, in the White House for 48 hours and on at 6.11 p.m. on May 14th, uh, 1948, that's 11 minutes after Israel declared its independence, Harry Truman made the United States the first nation on earth to recognize the recreated Jewish state. And the reason why you'll find George Bush 41. UNGA Resolution 3379, the so-called Zionism is Racism Resolution, mocks this pledge and the principles upon which the United Nations was founded. And I call now for its repeal. Zionism is not a policy. It is the idea that led to the creation of a home for the Jewish people to the state of Israel. And to equate Zionism with the intolerable sin of racism is to twist history and forget the terrible plight of Jews in World War II and indeed throughout history. To equate Zionism with racism is to reject Israel itself, a member of good standing the United, of the United Nations. This body cannot claim to seek peace and at the same time challenge Israel's right to exist. George Bush 41. By repealing this resolution unconditionally, the United Nations will enhance its credibility and serve the cause of peace. Would call for a new world order 11 years before the deadliest terrorist attack in U.S. history would take place 11 months before the attack on the USS Cole was a suicide bombing. The attack came 11 months before 9-11. A new partnership of nations has begun and we stand today at a unique and extraordinary moment. The crisis in the Persian Gulf, as grave as it is, also offers a rare opportunity to move toward an historic period of cooperation. Out of these troubled times, our fifth objective, a new world order can emerge, a new era, freer from the threat of terror, stronger in the pursuit of justice, and more secure in the quest for peace. An era in which the nations of the world, East and West, North and South, can prosper and live in harmony. A hundred generations have searched for this elusive path to peace, while a thousand wars raged across the span of human endeavor. And today that new world is struggling to be born. A world quite different from the one we've known. A world where the rule of law supplants the rule of the jungle. A world in which nations recognize the shared responsibility for freedom and justice. A world where the strong respect the rights of the weak. 487 also sums out to Justice Scalia, 79 
years old, Justice Scalia, who would die 2010 days after the fall of Afghanistan, Afghanistan, would die on the 44th day of the year, a day leaving 322 days on the calendar. 322, summing out to the order of the skull and bones, matching the value of Antonin Scalia, numeric ritual, Scalia 137, 7, a QAnon, and Joe Biden sacrifice, Antonin Scalia casket, the sacrament of anointing. Scalia died at the age of 79. Colleagues of Justice Scalia are mourning his death today, of course. Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg said she was best buddies with Scalia for more than 30 years. He died of an apparent heart attack over the weekend at a ranch in Texas. The property's owner says that Scalia went quail hunting on Friday. He went to bed early that night saying he felt tired and wanted to get a good night's sleep. Scalia was a devout Catholic. A priest was brought in to administer last rites. 322 also sums out to the truth is in the numbers. Never forget 9-11 terrorist attacks, the World Trade Center, Al-Qaeda attack on America, collapse of the World Trade Center, Iraq and Afghanistan, Freemasonic destruction rituals, seven countries in five years. The Pentagon, right after 9-11, about 10 days after 9-11, I went through the Pentagon and I saw Secretary Rumsfeld and, and Deputy Secretary Wolfowitz. I went downstairs just to say hello to some of the people on the joint staff who used, used to work for me. And one of the generals called me in. He said, sir, you got to come in. You got to come in and talk to me a second. I said, well, you're too busy. He said, no, no. He says, we've made the decision. We're going to war with Iraq. This was on or about the 20th of September. I said, we're going to war with Iraq. Why? He said, I don't know. <laughs> He said, I guess they don't know what else to do. So uh, I said, well, did they find some information collect connecting Saddam to Al-Qaeda? He said, no, no. He says, there's nothing new that way. They just made the decision to go to war with Iraq. He said, I guess it's like we don't know what to do about terrorists, but we've got a good military and we can take down governments. And um, he said, I guess if, if the only tool you have is a hammer, every problem has to look like a nail. So I came back to see him a few weeks later, and by that time we were bombing in Afghanistan. I said, are we still going to war with Iraq? And he said, oh, it's worse than that. He said, he reached over on his desk, he picked up a piece of paper, and he said, I just, he said, I just got this down from upstairs, meaning the Secretary of Defense's office today, and he said, this is a memo that describes how we're going to take out seven countries in five years, starting with Iraq and then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and finishing off Iran. I said, is it classified? He said, yes, sir. I said, <laughs> I said, well, don't show it to me. And I saw him a year or so ago, and I said, you remember that? He said, sir, I didn't show you that memo. I didn't show it to you. 322 also sums out to 156. Six, six. The magic Q number and matched the value of 17 years and days. U.S. President Bill Clinton, Monica Samuel Lewinsky, 9-11, Part 2, Donald Trump's birthday, and the Liberty Bell crack on September 11th, 1998, a date you can find embedded in the time span between the day the United States of America would declare her independence and her 244th year birthday in days, read backwards, 244, summing out to a code hidden within a code. 2700 months after Benjamin Franklin would release rules by which a great empire may be reduced to a small one on September 11th, 1773, or 156 months, four days before the collapse of the World Trade Center. Ken Starr would release his infamous findings that would lead to the impeachment of the Make America Great Again president. I believe that together we can make America great again. He would go on to be acquitted, close, but no cigar, cigar. A defining day for the future of President Clinton, Special Prosecutor Ken Starr, Congress, and the country. Here's the latest. Details of the Ken Starr accusations are officially out. Dan, this report accuses the president of lying, obstruction of justice, tampering with witnesses before the grand jury. In the view of the independent counsel, it all grows out of the president's relationship with Monica Lewinsky. It was the story of that relationship that took the bulk of the report that the independent counsel released today. 
The House Sergeant at Arms officially unsealed the document at mid-afternoon. It had been advertised as steamy, and you could almost see the steam rising as the boxes came open. It was a tawdry tale told by a young woman who had become emotionally involved with an older married man. She said it had begun during the government shutdown of 1995 with intense flirting. She said, I never expected to fall in love. And while the 42nd president was tearfully remorseful, know that the sorrow I feel is genuine. First and most important, my family, also my friends, my staff, my cabinet, Monica Lewinsky and her family, and the American people. I have asked all for their forgiveness. I have repented. For that little boy in Florida, who came up to me and said that he wanted to grow up and be president and to be just like me. This, however, would not always be his tune. I want to say one thing to the American people. I want you to listen to me. I'm going to say this again. I did not have sexual relations with that woman, Miss Lewinsky. I never told anybody to lie, not a single time, never. These allegations are false and I need to go back to work for the American people. Thank you. Those famous lines summing out to the year the Liberty Bell cracked, matching the value of Antonin Scalia, Ruth Bader Ginsburg Vesti, and Donald Trump, who was born on 6 14 1946 six, six, six. 100 years, 3 months, 22 days, after it would sing its last song, on a day written out to 23, 23 of 1846. Six. And while 223 stones out to the Liberty Bell, the Clinton Affair, the Trump Effect, the B System, Christian Zionists, Marshall, Law in America, the Number of Man, the Sixth Planet, the Star of Refram, the United States Dollar, Welcome to America, Gematria Decoding, 100 stones out to ET, the extraterrestrial Amy Vivian Coney Barrett, U.S. President Donald J. Trump, and July 4th, 2020, 2020, as well as direct energy weapons and mathematical perfection. The July fireworks shows are canceled this year due to the pandemic. There is still a reason to look up. Our Melissa Lefevre shows us why. Well, even though many of us won't get to look up and enjoy fireworks this 4th of July, you may still notice something different in the sky this weekend, a penumbral lunar eclipse. This will be the third eclipse of 2020 and the first visible in the United States. Now, there are three types of eclipses, a total, partial, and a penumbral. Now, a penumbral eclipse is when the moon moves through the outer part of the Earth's shadow, known as the penumbra. Now, the passing through the outer, outer shadow will slightly decrease the brightness of the moon. For a penumbral eclipse to occur, you need two ingredients. First, the moon must be full, and second, the sun, earth, and moon must be nearly aligned. Now, the eclipse begins at 11.07 p.m. on July 4th with the peak at 12.29 a.m. That's the best time to view it. And comes to an end at 1.52 a.m. on Sunday. Now, this month's full moon is known as the buck moon, and that's named after the antlers that emerge from a buck's forehead around this time of year. According to forecasts, on July 4th, 2020, a rare and unique planet parade will occur. All the solar system planets Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune plus the dwarf planet Pluto will line up on one side of the Sun at the same time. By planets alignment or parade, astronomers usually mean that planets will appear in the same part of the sky. Sometimes the arrangement of planets resembles a line, but it's not always the case. Most often, two or three planets form a line in the sky. Besides, a lot depends on the viewpoint. When planets line up on one side of the sun, they are not necessarily in the same region of the sky for observers from Earth. Vice versa, when planets are in the same part of the sky from Earth's point of view, they are not necessarily aligned from the sun. The last parade of planets of this type occurred in 1982, and the next one is expected in 2161 and 2492. The death of Antonin Scalia, who would die 17 years, 156 days, after 9-11 of 98, which came 156 weeks, four days, or exactly 36 months before the 9-11 attacks, would come 17 weeks, 
Four days after Donald Trump's 69th year or 3600 week birthday, or 244 days after the president on America's 244th year birthday would celebrate his 70th year or 840th month birthday, birthday 244, summing up to Antonin Gregory Scalia, 2016, the penumbral lunar eclipse matching the value of Saturn, the all-seeing eye, Antonin Scalia, Hellfire Sacrifice, Homicide Code, 156, 17 years ago, lucky number 7, the destroy of worlds, now the end begins, letters and numbers, as well as the 45th President of the United States, Donald John Trump, matching the value of prophecy fulfilled, Dr. Red Cow is born at Temple of Israel. The 2018 birth of the Doomsday Red Calf would come 75 days before Donald Trump's June 14th, a day written out, 14 6, 2018 birthday, or 146 weeks before Donald Trump's June 14, 2021, 75th birthday. 244 also sums out to the water of the ashes of the red heifer was the final thing in the 26th of September at 10 minutes to 7.48 on a day that would come seven years or 84 months after Antonin Scalia would coincidentally celebrate his 27th year anniversary of being a sworn associate Supreme Court Justice. He would do this by holding an interview with a New York magazine where he would mention his beliefs that the devil is a real person. He would even name drop Dick Cheney an old hunting buddy, buddy, buddy. Coincidentally, on the 6th of January of 2019, two years before the storming of the U.S. Capitol, or 159 days before Donald Trump would turn 73, 73. an age which could also be read 26,663 days old, 159, summing out to the King of the North, image of the Beast, Lizard King, King of Babylon, pathological liar. Chaos candidate, President Donald Trump, is Q. Seven years, the number seven, the U.S. Constitution, Agenda 21, the COVID-19 plot, California, wildfires, e pluribus, unum, keep America great, satanic numbers, February 13th, 2016, and 14777, which sums out to Masonic, sacrifice, Satan's number, Pepe the Frog, Q Storm, The New World, The Aquarian Age, and Christian Bale, who 159 days before Donald Trump's 73rd birthday would. And in his best actor acceptance speech for his role as former Vice President Dick Cheney, Christian Bale made an unusual acknowledgement. Thank you to that geezer over there, Adam. He said, he said, uh, he said, I've got to find somebody who can, who can be absolutely charisma free and reviled by everybody, so he went, that's got to be bail in it, you know. Thank you, and uh, for all the competition, I will be uh, cornering the market on uh, charisma-free arseholes. So, um, what do you think? Mitch McConnell, next. That could be good, couldn't it? Um, uh, thank you to uh, Satan for giving me inspiration on how to play this role. 12 months, seven days after Scalia, would be put in the ground. We're talking about maybe Mars. Yeah, interesting. We have a mission to Mars. He has a mission to Mars. We'll find out at one o'clock. <laughs> Thank you. All right, this is interesting. New video to show you here. You had to be in the right spot to see it. But most people in the southernmost part of the globe actually witnessed a rare celestial sight on Sunday, a ring of fire eclipse or annual solar eclipse. That's when the moon moves between the Earth and the sun. So we sped up that video for you to give you a better idea of actually what happens. People in South America and the southern part of Africa only saw the full ring of fire effect for about a minute. On the same night, Donald Trump would hold a ball for 46 governors. 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 Well, President Trump has held his first major social event at the White House, hosting an annual ball for the nation's governors. 46 governors were in the room as the president highlighted his efforts to tighten border control and security. He criticized Obamacare for having what he called tremendous problems, and he also spoke about his plans to replace it. And I think 
think we have something that's going to really be excellent. But we're going to have it fixed, and we're going to repeal and replace. And I think you're going to see something very, very special. A health care overhaul is expected to be discussed further as the president stops by for a meeting with the governors today. And the White House is resisting growing calls for an independent prosecutor investigate allegations that Russia meddled in the presidential election. 46 months, nine days, or 201 weeks, one day before the Capitol would be stormed, a day which would come four years, 322 days, or four years, 46 months before Justice Scalia would. Today, thousands of mourners are gathering as the late Justice Antonin Scalia lies in repose at the Supreme Court. There was a private ceremony this morning. Now that viewing is open to the public. President Obama and the First Lady will pay their respects later today. Vice President Joe Biden and his wife will attend Scalia's funeral mass tomorrow. 222 years, 22 weeks before George Washington, the first U.S. president who was born on the day written out to 22, would lay the capital cornerstone. It has been the custom since time immemorial to dedicate the cornerstone with corn, wine, and oil. We present them now in the name of the great architect of the universe to invoke his continued blessing which he has bestowed upon our country and its people. So what did it be? 201 weeks, one day, or 46 months, nine days before the capital would be stormed, 223 years, 23 weeks, two days after George Washington would lay the foundation cornerstone, exactly 15 weeks for 107 days before his 71st birthday, Donald Trump, the 45th U.S. President, would descend upon the U.S. Capitol and hold his first joint address to Congress, Congress. Congress. at the U.S. Capitol. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. To funerals. The Capitol has been at the center of American history. Shortly before he delivers his speech to a joint session of Congress tonight, President Trump will be brought into this office. This is the Speaker's or Speaker of the House's ceremonial office. All presidents come here before they deliver a State of the Union address. Everything is traditional Washington, except for one thing. Over in this corner, there is a very modern television monitor. This is so that the president can watch what's happening in the House chamber before he enters the room. This building, not only the heart of our democracy, but of Washington itself, dividing our nation's capital into its four quadrants. So that's it, that is the center of Washington. This is a room called the Crypt here at the Capitol, one floor below the rotunda. But I wanna show you something else, and it's one floor beneath this. Just down this staircase, it's almost always off limits. This is called Washington's Tomb. It's one level below the crypt here at the Capitol. Now, this is where George Washington was supposed to be buried along with his wife, Martha. But he made it clear he didn't want to be buried here. He wanted to be at the family home at Mount Vernon. That was where he was buried. But even though there's no body here, this place is still under lock and key. And the tomb isn't the only secret the Capitol keeps underground. I think most people are probably familiar with the more ornate spaces of the Capitol on the upper floors by the rotunda. But down below, there is an intricate system of hallways and tunnels where you could easily get lost. For example, the Speaker of the House travels around here in a hallway like this all the time. Now, originally, this was built, or these were built, so the people who worked at the Congress could avoid the sometimes nasty weather in Washington. No frills down here, sometimes just on a wall, to House Committee on Appropriations this way. And while a lot of people take a subway or train to work, this one might be the most exclusive of them all. Right now I'm getting to do something very few people ever get to do. I'm taking a ride on the subway car that travels beneath the Capitol. It goes from Independence Avenue, one office building over there, into the Capitol itself. This is how members of Congress travel during the day. Certain cars are reserved for members only. 
This is really important when a member of Congress has to rush back to this building to take part in an important vote. And by the way, in days gone by, it wasn't a subway car like this. Instead, they actually had Studebaker automobiles that traveled on little roadways under the Capitol. And that's how people got back and forth. And what would a visit to one of America's most historic buildings be without a ghost story? Here's a story most people won't tell you about the Capitol. These are the blood stairs. It's a long involved story, but suffice it to say there was a long simmering feud between a member of Congress and a reporter. That feud came to a head 127 years ago today when the reporter confronted that congressman on these stairs, took out a gun and shot him. The marks on these stairs are said to be the blood of Congressman William Talby. And from time to time, people who work here say they see his ghost. 224 years of history and countless other secrets kept within these halls. And of course, it will be the scene of great interest tonight when President Trump delivers his first ever speech to a joint session of Congress. You can watch that speech right here on NBC, 9 o'clock Eastern, 6 o'clock Pacific time. 127 years after the death of Congressman William P. Talby, who was shot right in the eye on the steps of the U.S. Capitol, now dubbed the Blood Stairs. Stairs, stairs, stairs. William P. Talby, who would linger for 11 days before he would succumb to his wounds on March 11th of 1890, exactly 46 years before the birth of Antonin Scalia, 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 Scalia. or 46,000 days before the late justice would lie in state in the U.S. Capitol. Capitol, Capitol. And while you'll find William P. Talby sums out to Three, two, 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 two. Matching the value of Antonin Scalia casket, Antonin Scalia numeric ritual 137, human on sacrifice, and the return. You'll also find Congressman William P. Talby sums out to the destruction of the world on February 2nd, 2020. And in the Agrippa cipher, you'll find 127 sums out to the blood stairs matching the value of justice. Antonin Scalia murdered. The numbers 1, 3, and 7. 9-11 seven, seven. was an inside job. The Catholic Church, Scalia, Ginsburg Sacrifice, Justice, Amy Vivian, Coney Barrett, Phoebe Ray, the Saturn Goddess, the COVID-19 vaccine, a Zionist plot, the 9-11 trilogy finale, and Donald Trump World UFO Day 2022. Two. And in the Francis Bacon ciphers you'll find 127 also sums out to King Cyrus, the U.S. Capitol, Q clock, Trump, who was born on a day, written out, 146, equals Satan, the Wizard of Oz, Kofifi, the USS Cole, inside job, Biden, O Lucifer, and the U.S. Capitol, Capitol. Interestingly, the shooting of Congressman William P. Talby sums out to the year that Donald Trump would officially take the presidential stage, match the value of Donald J. Trump, make America great again, and the French Revolution, 1789. The council was a revolution in the church. For instance, Cardinal Suenens made a parallel between the council and the French Revolution saying that Vatican II was 1789 in the church. 1789, the year that the French Revolution would first begin. It's also a number you can find embedded in the time span between the day that would see the death of Justice Antonin Scalia and the day that the capital would be stormed. You'll also find the number in the age that Justice Amy Coney Vivian Barrett, who was born on January 28th, 1972, would turn on the day that the 46th U.S. President would be inaugurated. But when you think about just two weeks ago, people were storming our capital, trying to take over um, our government. And what does it say about our country that in such a short period of time, we see people show up, former presidents of both parties, leaders across the aisle, all to celebrate the smooth transition of power. And I think this is a moment made for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, soon to be president. 1,307 days after Donald Trump's first address to Congress, a day which would come 227 years, nine months, 23 days after the French Revolution would start, exactly 187 weeks after Donald Trump, who shares a time span of 187 days, 
with the 266th Pope, 187. Summing out to 137, Antonin, Scalia sacrifice, Zionist inoculation, Zionist and Masonic terrorism. 46 days later, 46 days after the 46th U.S. president would. Former Vice President Joe Biden has picked his running mate, and that is her right there. It is junior California Senator Kamala Harris. Joe Biden would select the 27th district attorney of San Francisco on the 227th month anniversary of the September 11th attacks. 46 days later, or 187 weeks after Donald Trump would host 46 governors. Nine days after the death of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who would die 187 days after her 87th birthday, 187, summing out to Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who would be nominated to the U.S. Court of Appeals by President Jimmy Carter. A very progressive move for the time. The 39th U.S. President, who was hailed by many as the first feminist president, had a very long list of firsts. Among that list, we find he was the first president to be born in a hospital, the first to use a nickname in an official capacity, the first to host a papal visit to the White House. This afternoon, Pope John Paul and I met alone in the Oval Office and discussed the future. The future of faith, the future of people, the future prospects for peace. We share a belief that the church must in no way be confused with a political community, nor bound to any political system. But we also spoke of opportunities we might pursue together, each acting for justice in the present and striving together for a common future of peace and love. Let us not wait so long for ourselves and for you to meet again. Welcome to our country, our new friend. Jimmy Carter would also be the president who would report a UFO 47 years before the death of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, the judge who on Donald Trump's 47th birthday would. Judge Ginsburg's values are the very ones that represent the best in America. I am proud to nominate this path-breaking attorney, advocate, and judge to be the 107th Justice to the United States Supreme Court. And while President Carter's declassification of UFO documents was blocked, by the CIA. The Jimmy Carter UFO situation, but apparently he wanted to release the UFO files and, and George Bush Sr. Well, been, blocked them I, at CIA. This, however, wouldn't stop him from discussing his close encounter. encounter, encounter, encounter. Uh, gathered in a, in a schoolyard with about 20 other men, and we saw a, a, a bright light uh, appear in the distant uh, western skies, and it got uh, closer and closer, and when it uh, was just above the treetops, it changed color, and then it stayed there for a while, and then it uh, disappeared into the distance. And none of us could ever imagine what it was, and I still don't know what it was. In, in 76, you said you'd try and get release all information to the public and to scientists about other UFO sightings. Yes. Do you think you achieved that? I, I'm not sure, but we did release a lot of the information, but I don't know how much was not released. Interesting, that. While in space as command pilot on Gemini 5, Astronaut General James McDivitt saw an unidentified object approach his spacecraft and then move away when he tried to film it. One astronaut who actually chased a UFO while a fighter pilot in Germany in 1951 is Colonel Gordon Cooper. One of the original seven Mercury astronauts, Colonel Cooper sent this letter to the United Nations November 9, 1978 to express his view on UFOs. I believe that these extraterrestrial vehicles and their crews are visiting this planet from other planets which obviously are a little more technically advanced than we are here on Earth. I am somewhat qualified to discuss them since I have been into the fringes of the vast areas in which they travel. 
also, I did have occasion in 1951 to have two days of observation of many flights of them of different sizes flying in fighter formation, generally from east to west over Europe. They were at a higher altitude than we could reach with our jet fighters of that time. This is an official UFO sighting report detailing the observation of a UFO by 10 to 12 people for approximately 10 minutes. The sighting was reported by one of the witnesses, President Jimmy Carter, while governor of Georgia. It could not have been a planet, a star, meteor, or aircraft. Seven years, 84 months, after Justice Scalia's The Devil is a Real Person interview, 187 weeks, after Donald Trump would host 46 governors. 46 governors were in the room as the president highlighted his efforts to tighten border control and security. He criticized Obamacare for having what he called tremendous problems, and he also spoke about his plans to replace it. 46 days after the now 46th U.S. president would select Kamala Harris, the first female person of color U.S. Vice President, who shares a 266-day time span with Justice Amy Coney Barrett. The Justice who would take the constitutional oath administered by Justice Clarence Thomas during a televised ceremony hosted by President Donald J. Trump. Trump, Trump, Trump. 56 months, 13 days, or 1717 days after the death of Justice Antonin Scalia. Amy Coney Barrett, Barrett. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion or purpose of evasion and that I will well and faithfully discharge and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which I'm about to enter the duties of the office on which I am about to enter so help me God so help me God Here it is. We have a new Supreme Court Justice. She would be administered the judicial oath in a private ceremony the next day, October 27th, a day which can look like 127. This would be done in the East Conference Room, the same room where Justice Scalia, who would die 27 days before his 80th birthday, would hold his 27 year anniversary, The Devil is a Real Person interview on September 26th. The private ceremony would be officiated by the 17th Chief Justice of the United States, Justice John G. Roberts Jr. Amy Coney Barrett would take the judicial oath 266 weeks after the 266th Pope, who was born December 17th. 147 years, 227 days after the start of the French Revolution, would first visit the White House and give a 600-word speech to 15,000 people. 39 days after the death of the Justice, it's who would die 187 days after her 87th birthday. birthday, birthday, birthday. 187, summing up to Justice Amy Coney Barrett, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, President Jimmy Carter, Donald J. Trump, Conspiracy Theory, and President White Rabbit, 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 Rabbit. and all the death of Justice Ginsburg would come 39 days before Justice Barrett would take the judicial oath of office. It would also come nine days before Amy Coney Barrett, a legal superstar who bested 187 students to graduate at the top of her class and would eventually become the first justice since 1870 to be confirmed without a single vote from the Senate Minority Party. Unfortunately, her mentor, Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia, would not be there to celebrate in her achievement. He would die exactly 17 days after she would celebrate her 44th birthday, birthday, birthday. on the 44th day of the year. 
Over the past week, our nation has mourned the loss of a true American legend, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Now we gather in the Rose Garden to fulfill one of my highest and most important duties under the United States Constitution, the nomination of a Supreme Court Justice to continue our never-ending task of ensuring equal justice and preserving the impartial rule of law. I clerked for Justice Scalia more than 20 years ago, but the lessons I learned still resonate. His judicial philosophy is mine too. A judge must apply the law as written. The President has asked me to become the ninth justice, and as it happens, I'm used to being in a group of nine, my family. But this evening, I also want to acknowledge you, my fellow Americans. September 26th would also be the day of... This is Jonathan Kahn. We are standing at a pivotal moment in world history, a juncture that can permanently seal the world's course for evil or good, for calamity or redemption. We are witnessing what the Bible foretold, the great falling away, the apostasy, the turning away from God, the driving of God out of the public square, the promoting of sexual immorality, the killing of millions of unborn children, an emerging culture of darkness and godlessness. We're witnessing nations that have known God beginning to wage war against Him and His ways. America, founded on a biblical foundation stone, now falling away from that foundation. This year, 2020, I believe is crucial. If we don't see a spiritual turning and awakening, repentance and revival now, we may not have that chance again. We have a window of time, and the purpose of that window is return and revival. We know that there will be apostasy, but the Bible also foretells that God will pour out His Spirit on all flesh. There can be revival, but revival can only come through repentance. Individual revival comes through individual repentance and national revival through national repentance. What can we do? What can you do? I have seen once in my lifetime the hand of God change the course of world history. It all began not in the halls of government, but with the people of God who gathered in a sacred assembly in the nation's capital with the scripture, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their evil ways, I will forgive their sin. I will hear their prayer and I will heal their land. It can happen again. But if we don't respond now at this most critical moment, we may not have the chance to do so again. Therefore, this is the announcement of the return, the national and global day of prayer and repentance. It'll be a day and more than a day, a time and a season for the moving of God for prayer, repentance, return, and revival. The central day will be Saturday, September 26th, in a sacred assembly according to what is laid forth in Scripture. In America, it will center on the nation's capital, on the Washington Mall. But it will also take place that same day in the states, capitals, churches, gatherings, homes around the nation. But it's not just for America. It's for the world, for every nation, for your nation. A day to return in prayer and repentance to God, to turn back according to the promise of 2 Chronicles 7.14, If My People. No matter what nation you're from, you need and your nation needs the hand of God. If you're a Christian, a Christian leader, you can have a great part, an important part in bringing the return to your nation. Spread the word. Let all the pastors and churches and believers in your nation know. Spread this video on the web, on social media. Plan a national gathering on that day, September 26th, in the Capitol in your capital, but also gatherings in your states and your churches, your homes, all over your land. The return is not simply an event, but a movement of repentance starting now. And with God's people first and then their nation to turn to God now in prayer, righteousness, holiness, in spreading the gospel in the Holy Spirit, and then interceding for your nation for national and world revival starting now. And then in September, in the 10 days that surround September 26th, the biblical 10 days of repentance. Set those days apart for intensifying your prayers and intercession and all you're doing. It all starts with the Feast of Trumpets, September 18th, and goes to the Day of Atonement, September 29th, and in the centering on the Day of the Return, Saturday, September 26th. 
Pray for America and pray for your nation and for all nations for the end time harvest, the end time revival. And if you're not seeing this on the website, go to the return website and check under international. Find out more details. So now, in view of the calling we have and of the moment before us, let us each rise to that call to take God as his word, to do what he has called us to do, to believe him for great and mighty things we know not of, to return and seek to live in revival and become messengers of revival. It is time to break up our fallow ground. It's time to seek the Lord as never before. It is time to return. On September 26th, nine days after the death of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, the return would descend upon the nation's capital. We speak life to the United States of America, and we declare this day that we will obey you, and through your grace, we pledge and proclaim America will end abortion and no longer merely regulate it. We pray for our president. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you for President Trump. Grant him divine protection, wisdom, and favor. May he, may he continue to lead as you direct. Awaken your people to register and vote to elect righteous, pro-life, and courageous leaders at every level. We pray for voter integrity. Alert your angels, gatekeepers, and watchmen to protect voter fraud in every form. Bring swift and complete just justice to those who would interfere, illegally alter, or attempt to steal our election in any way. We pray for your choice for the Supreme Court vacancy and for swift confirmation by the Senate. Strengthen your nominee and protect her from personal attacks and assaults against her faith. On September 26, 2020, nine days after the death of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, on the first Jesuit Pope's 30th thousand six hundred day of life, a number which interestingly, if you drop the zeros, sums out to nine or leaves you with a 36. Six, six, six. A number whose integers sum out to 666, a number which you can find in the added up dimensions of the tallest obelisk in the world, the Washington Monument, which would be on display on this very special September 26th, the day that Donald Trump would nominate Amy Coney Barrett to the Supreme Court. You'll also find 36 in the depths of the Washington Monument as his foundation reaches 36 feet below the ground. 36, which sums out to 46, matching the value of 36, as well as Skull and Bones, the Jesuit Pope, the Star of David, Hellfire, All-Seeing Eye, the Holy Bible, Distraction, Francis Bacon, Red Heifer, Gematria Code, Master Mason, Mastermind, Rest in Peace, Notorious, Antonin, Scalia, 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 Amy Barrett, Donald F. Duck, the 36th U.S. President, Lyndon B. Johnson, Harry S. Truman, Area 51, Donald Trump, Antichrist, Final Solution, Michelle Obama, and Senator B. Obama. Obama. Congressman Kucinich, I want to move to a different area because uh, yeah, right. this is a serious, a serious question. The godmother of your daughter, Shirley MacLaine, writes in her new book that you cited a UFO over her home in Washington State, that you found the encounter extremely moving, that it was a triangular craft, silent and hovering, that if you felt a connection to your heart and her directions in your mind. Now. Did you see a UFO? Uh, I, I did, and uh, the rest of the account, well, I, I didn't, I, it was an unidentified flying object, okay? It's like, it's unidentified. I saw something. Now, to answer your question, um, I'm moving my, it's, and I'm also going to move my campaign office to Roswell, New Mexico, and another one in Exeter, New Hampshire, okay? And, uh, and also, you have to keep in mind that more, that Jimmy Carter saw a UFO, and also that more people in this country uh, uh, have seen UFOs and I think approve of George Bush's presidency. Actually, four... And, and, and so, wait, we're just getting started here. No, no, I mean, so, well, we, have, we have about 14% of Americans say they have seen UFOs. I'm going to move... Ask what was the percentage? 14%. What was that percentage? 14. Thank you. I want to see... Uh, I'm going to ask Senator Obama a question in the same line. The three astronauts of Apollo 11 who went to the moon back in 1969 all said that they believe there is life beyond Earth. Do you agree? You know, 
I don't know, and I don't presume to know. What I know is there is life here on Earth, and, and that we're not attending to life here on Earth. Uh, we're not taking care of kids uh, who are alive and unfortunately are not getting health care. We're not taking care of senior citizens who are alive and are seeing their uh, heating prices go up. So as president, those are the people I will be attending to first. Let's, there may be uh, some other folks on their way. Let's, um, let's. There may be uh, some other folks on their way. Maybe he means folks like his bodyguard. Bodyguard. Conspiracy theorists have hit a new high after again accusing the White House of hiding evidence of aliens, this time right out in public. While President Obama was recently speaking to a US-Israeli cooperation group, one of his bodyguards was spied on video looking a bit odd. A series of odd features on his head, face, plus a very strange behavior and creepy movements suggest something else. Suggest what exactly? Is he an actual reptilian humanoid? Is he one of the Anunnaki? Is he a tall grey bio-android, or what? Well with that creepy colour filter who could argue? But due the low lighting in half the amphitheater, he would pass unnoticed or regarded as a normal human being by the crowd. Unnoticed except maybe by all the TV cameras. Though unable to discuss the identity of Secret Service agents, the White House has responded in kind. National Security Council official Caitlin Hayden remarked that any alien security programs were most probably cut during the recent sequester. She also suggested that Area 51 should be consulted for further information. Conspiracy theorists were quick to point out that that wasn't exactly a denial. Did his shape-shifting device fail during Obama's speech, in the middle of an amphitheater crowded with people? Or has the outer edge of the internet struck again? Dallas Baird for News Limited. You'll also find 36 in the time span, if you drop the zero, between the weeks from the day that Pope Francis would first visit the White House and would give a scant 600-word speech and the day that former President Barack Obama would celebrate his 60th year of life. 600, summing out to Barack Obama, number code, mass spell, Cast the guide stones and the end of days. days. 600 is also the amount of guests that former President Obama would host 306 weeks after Pope Francis would first visit the White House. It would be hailed one of the biggest events of the year. Yeah. Guys, this is uh, shaping up to be the event of the year. 600 people, like you said, they are going to be gathering at former President Obama's waterfront mansion in Martha's Vineyard. Guests include um, George Clooney, Steven Spielberg, Oprah, all to celebrate the former president's 60th birthday. But let's return to September 26, 2020, and the return. seal this time we have done what God has called us to do be blessed in that and again when you go home go with power go in revival you are an agent of revival go in the victory of God and let's continue to pray as we as the as God's will goes forth so I'm now going to do the blessing that the Bible gives that God himself wrote the words to it's the blessing that he himself said you speak this this is God's prayer upon my people and when you do my name is going to be upon them this goes back over 3,000 years this is a prayer that yet the messiah knew very clearly and this is for you and so this was done by the house of aaron and his sons the priests that's the house i'm from so I, it's always my blessing to do this so right now i'm going to ask you lift up your hands once more and this is the blessing this is god don't take this as from man take it from him it's his this is the blessing in the language of Jesus, the language that he gave it. And, and whatever is needed, this is truly, this is not just words. God inhabits the praises and God inhabits his blessing. So I'm going to ask whatever is God's will for your life. And for all those who are out for America, those who are out in the nations right now, 
I'm going to pray the blessing of God upon you going forth in the ancient language of the Bible. prosper? Not quite. This is in fact an ancient Kabbalistic ritual, a powerful one, so powerful that those that know its power shield their eyes from it. So I'm with my father and my grandfather and my brother sitting in the, the bench seats. Women were upstairs. Five or six guys get up on the bima on the stage and they're facing the congregation. They get their talit over their heads and they start this chanting. I think it's called duchening. And uh, my father said to me, don't look. So everybody's got their, their eyes covered with their hands or they've got their talit down over their faces or turned away, turned their back to these guys. And I hear this strange sound coming from them. They're not singers, they were shouters and dissonant. It was all discordant. And they were doing like that kind of wailing. And all discordant, not together, not in unison. And then the leader would shout out, and the rest of them would respond, it was chilling, you know, <laughs> whoa, something, something major is happening here. So I peeked, and I saw them with their hands stuck out from beneath their telly like this towards the congregation. I thought, wow, something really got hold of me. I thought, this is, a, I had no idea what was going on, but the sound of it and the look of it was magical. This is the shape of the letter Shin. Hebrew alphabet, Shin. Very interesting letter in the, in the uh, language. It, it's the first letter in the word Shaddai, the first letter in the word Shalom, first letter in the word Shekhinah, which is the name of the feminine aspect of God, who supposedly was created to live amongst humans, the Shekhinah. Why you're not supposed to look came to me much, much later, much later. My wife Susan has a cousin who's a rabbi here in Los Angeles at Temple Israel. And I was telling him this story and he said the reason you don't look is that 
The legend is that during that benediction, uh, the Shekhinah comes into the sanctuary to bless the congregation. And you don't want to see that because it's so powerful, it could, it could really get, be seriously injured or it could be fatal. So that's why you protect yourself by hiding your eyes. Don't look. I survived. <laughs> I never dreamed that I would do that someday or be involved with it in some way. But sure enough, one day we're making the Star Trek series, television series. We come to a, a very lovely script called A Mock Time, where my character, Spock, who comes from the Vulcan planet, has to go home to fulfill a marriage betrothal, to be married. And the lady who's going to uh, conduct the service is a, a lady named Tepau, played by a wonderful Viennese, Jewish Viennese actress named Celia Lofty. I'm supposed to meet her when we arrive at the planet. We exchange hellos. It was the first time we're seeing other Vulcans, other people of my race. So I was hoping to find some touches that could develop the story of the Vulcan sociology, history, whatever, ritual. So I said to the director, I think we should have some special greeting that Balkans do, because we, he said, what do you mean? I said, well, you know, humans, we, we have these rituals, that we, the things that we do, um, we shake hands, we, we nod to each other, we bow to each other, we salute each other. What do Balkans do? So I suggested this. He said, okay. And that's how we, we did it as a greeting, a Balkan greeting. Uh, boy, that just took off through the culture. It was amazing. Within days after it was on the air, I was getting it on the street. People doing this to me, waving to me in this Vulcan gesture. That, that's interesting. And it's been that way to this day. It's almost 50 years later, people are still doing it. It just touched the magic chord. Most people to this day still don't know what it's all about. A lot of people do because I've talked about it a lot. I've been asked the question, where did that come from? And I have very readily put out this story. It's, it's, it's sort of a, like, like a secret handshake or something you know, that people enjoy to exchange with each other, as if to say, "I'm, I'm in on it. I, I know this. I know the joke. You know, Star Trek, right? You know, hey, Star Trek. You know, it's, great. it's great. People don't realize they're blessing each other with this. <laughs> it's great. The Vulcan peace sign is anything but peaceful. Vulcan was a sun deity who was associated with fire, thunderbolts, and light. The festival, in honor of him, was called the Volcania, in which animal sacrifices were offered. He bears a family relationship to the Christian devil. It's fascinating to know that he married Venus, another name for Lucifer, or the devil. What is even more interesting is that Vulcan is adored in masonry under the name of Tubal Cain. In the Masonic quiz book, the question is asked, who was the Tubal Cain? The answer, he is the Vulcan of the Pagans. It's why on March 7th, 2020, a day, written out 73, 73. the news would report, President Trump shook 10 hands on a single receiving line. If you don't shake hands, they're not going to like you too much. He says he's not taking protective measures, that we must at least be doing what Stephen Colbert did. Hey! If you're not into sanitizing, jokey alternatives range from the booty bump like, <laughs> to the foot bump uh, yeah. to the Vulcan salute and whatever you do. Start working on not touching your face. You'll find the attending Capitol doctor advising lawmakers to do just that. Coincidentally, on the same day the WHO would declare a pandemic, it's also why the Space Force logo might seem so familiar. The Pentagon's new Space Force is not Star Trek Starfleet Command. Despite what some sci-fi fans say, it's a striking similarity in logos. President Trump tweeted what appears to be the new logo tonight. Space Force is the first new military service since the Air Force was created in 1947. It's meant mainly to improve protection of U.S. satellites rather than to put warriors in orbit to conduct combat in outer space. Look at this. Today, the U.S. Space Force unveiled its new dress uniform. And in a first, the uniform was designed for women and later adapted for men. It features a blue coat with six buttons, symbolizing the sixth branch of the military and gray pants. Some social media people said it looked kind of Star Trek-y. Interestingly, Ruth Bader Ginsburg 
would die 27 days after the Vulcan Alia. Nine days before the return, the day that Donald Trump would nominate Amy Coney Barrett to the Supreme Court, right after he would do this, the 244-year U.S. anniversary president would jump aboard Air Force One and head for the Harrisburg International Airport. A vote by any senator for Judge Amy Coney Barrett is a vote to strike down the Affordable Care Act. And Schumer added, I will strongly the birth of the red heifer calf would land exactly seven months after Amy V. Barrett would celebrate her 46th birthday on January 28th, 2018, 46. Summing up to the Holy Grail, Amy V. Barrett, the Beast, King Cyrus, the Red Calf, 46, 18, Round Zero. The Titanic. The Titanic. Sacrifice. Judge. A.G. Scalia. The Purge. The Clot Shot. Atonement. Osiris. And two. Two seven. The ten span between Amy V. Barrett's 46th birthday and in the age of COVID-19, the 19th anniversary of the September 11th attacks, she would turn a very fitting 17,760 days old on this day. The height of the newly constructed One World Trade Center. On September 26, 2020, at 10 minutes to 7.48, or 7.38, 108 years, 23 weeks, 4 days after the sinking of the RMS Titanic, or 108 weeks, 4 days, which can also be read, 760 days after the birth of the Red Heifer, Donald Trump would stand at the door of Air Force One at the Harrisburg International Airport, which sums out to 2,220 in Middleton, Pennsylvania, and hold a rally. 2,220, also summing out to January 28th, 2018, Amy V. Barrett's 46th birthday, Donald Trump, The Apprentice, September 11, and Sandy Hook, Secret Codes, The Numbers, and February 2nd, 2020, a day written out to 220, and a day that we'll see. China is ground zero for the mysterious coronavirus outbreak. It's also where authorities are going to extremes to contain it and help the infected. Nearly 60 million people are still on some kind of lockdown here, but that has not stopped the virus from traveling. On Saturday, the Philippines confirmed its first death from the virus and the first actually outside China. That was a 44 year old man from Wuhan. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the 45th president of the United States, Donald J. Trump. And I'm proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm free. He would step out at 7.39, local time, 46, also summing out to Middletown as well, has filled that seat. As we stand together in the rain, it's supposed to bring luck, we'll take it, huh, my man? I just came from the Rose Garden of the White House. <laughs> Thank you very much. And I love you too. Or I wouldn't have done this. I wouldn't have done it, but we're doing well. Our country's going to be stronger than ever before. Very soon, you watch, it's happening. It's all happening beautifully, it's happening. We had to close it down. We saved millions of lives. We opened it up, and we're doing record kind of numbers, and we're gonna have the best year, and we're gonna have a great third quarter. So thank you very much. I've just come from the Rose Garden of the White House, where I proudly nominated Judge Amy Coney Barrett to the United States Supreme Court. Judge Barrett is a brilliant legal mind, an extraordinary scholar, you know that? Number one in her class. You know, the, uh, the professor, one of the most respected people, he said the greatest student he's ever had. That's pretty good. That's a little better than Biden, wouldn't you say? <laughs> she should be running for president and Senate. Now, it's a little bit better, academically slightly better. And most important of all, she will defend your God-given rights and freedoms. She will. Like vaccine requirements. 
there's no right to get other people sick. Just like the right to swing your fist ends at someone else's nose. And while there is a place for legitimate religious or health exemptions, there's no right to go on tour or go to work during a pandemic if you're not vaccinated or tested. And this isn't some revolutionary new concept. This has been settled constitutional question for over a hundred years, as just Sammy Coney Barrett reinforced when she declined to stop Indiana University's man. And this can't be said enough. I saved our auto industry by withdrawing from the horrible Trans-Pacific Partnership. Would have killed what I've done for Michigan, in particular, also Pennsylvania. But what I've done for them with autos, forget it. They're building 17 or expanding 17 different plants. Build that wall. Build that wall. We invested $2.5 trillion in the U.S. military and launched the first new branch of the U.S. Armed Forces in nearly 75 years, the Space Force. And that's going to be very important. I did more in 47 months than Sleepy Joe Biden did in 47 years. It's true. It's true. I kept my promise, recognized the true capital of Israel, and opened the American Embassy in Jerusalem. You know who likes that the most? The evangelicals like it the most. You know that? The evangelicals love it. We're just with Franklin Graham and a lot of great people. They had a very successful event at the mall today. I don't know if you heard about it. It was great. Franklin Graham, all of the top evangelical and other leaders they were great. They were at the White House ceremony today for the justice. I also recognized Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights. And instead of the endless wars, we are forging peace all over the Middle East. And it's costing nothing. Costing nothing. We will strike down terrorists who threaten our citizens, and we will keep America out of these endless, ridiculous, stupid foreign wars in countries that you've never even heard of. We will maintain America's unrivaled military might, and we will ensure peace through strength. You know, we rebuilt our military. You saw it. $2.5 trillion. We have weapons. The I mean, just to talk about them, the likes of which no country has ever seen before. The power, the strength, the, the uh, incredible talent and engineering. We have weapons, weapons the likes of which no country has ever seen before. We are so far advanced over every other country, and hope to God we never have to use them. America will land the first woman on the moon, and the United States will be the first nation to land an astronaut on Mars very soon. NASA has finished stacking its latest rocket and spacecraft. Technicians and engineers secured the Orion spacecraft atop the space launch system at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Cape Canaveral. The 322-foot-tall rocket is said to be taller than the Statue of Liberty. NASA plans to launch the uncrewed mission Artemis I to the moon early next year. And NASA has become the preeminent space center again in the world. It was tired. It was over. We will stop the radical indoctrination of our students and restore patriotic education to our school. We will teach our children to love our country, honor our history, and always respect our great American flag. And we will live by the timeless words of our national motto, In God We Trust. Right? It's where you'll find 116 months earlier on Amy Coney Barrett, the justice who would be confirmed to the Supreme Court 487 months, five days after the Georgia Gatchstones would first be erected and dedicated a tribute to the goddess in the age of reason on March 22nd of 1980. Over 951 cubic feet of granite make up the 11 pieces of the monument. The overall height is 19 feet 3 inches from the surface of the ground to the top of the capstone. 
There are slots and holes in the center stone that have astrological significance because they have been cut at precise angles to permit accurate readings of the sun and moon at various times of the year. 116 summing out to UAP as well as June 25th, 2021, the day that the government's unidentified aerial phenomena preliminary assessment would be released to the public 116 months before the return in what is deemed the holiest site to three of the world's major religions on Amy Vivian Coney's 39th birthday, 39, summing out to the Queen Amy Vivian Coney, the Storm, the Devil, Donald Trump, Liberty Bell, the 39th U.S. President, Jimmy Carter, Ginsburg, the Space Force, Star Trek, Luciferian, Government Green Pass, March 11, the shot, nuclear weapon, and Mars mission. There's a new video this morning that some say may be proof we're not alone in the universe. A UFO in the form of a bright light is seen descending over the dome of the rock in Jerusalem. The video is said to be taken over the weekend. Uh, then suddenly the light shoots up into the sky. Here you see it. Another video from a different angle uh, appears to show the light doing the same thing. Those clips have gone viral now. 